The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. We are in the championship round for these summer chess classics. I'm Yasser, along with there Hi, you go. Wow. Hi everyone. That is it's, crazy. Last it's day. It's over before it started. What's I going know. on? It's, it's been exciting by. and it's been a lot of fun. And the fight at the very top is incredibly intense as our standings will show us. Big, yeah. do the honors. Absolutely. Tell us about the standings for group. Group A, absolutely, like stunning <laughs> situation. We have four-way tie. Benjamin Block, Ramnak Satvani, John Burke, Nicholas Theodore are tying for first with five points. That is intense. And in the B group? B group looks better because we only <laughs> have two-way tie here with Semyon Lamasov and Andrew Hong, five and a half points. And also, Andrew just finished his game. game and he drew against Brandon Jacobson so. who played the second half of the tournament very decently. I think it's a solid result for Andrew but right. it means that Simeon Lamasov can take the championship. Exactly. Armand's still in the mix there uh, as he's a tied for third alongside Aksha. Absolutely. Tell us about the, as we see the playing hall, very nice view of the playing hall. Tell us about the tournament format. How does it work? It's two template round robin, nine minutes for the first 40 moves, 30 minutes for the rest of the game, and 30 seconds increment throughout the game. Exactly. Well, we will be crowning a champion today, regardless of whether they tie for first. Mm -hmm. What happens in case of a playoff? In case of a playoff, if it's only two players, right. we'll have 10 plus 2 rapid match. Okay. 10 plus 2, please notice it's delay. Not an yeah. increment bonus. The clock doesn't start for the first two seconds. Absolutely. And if those games are still uh, tied? If the games are still tied after the rapid matches, we are going to immediately have Armageddon game. Okay, this is a little confusing. If there's more players, uh, hopefully that's a bridge we'll cross to uh, once we get there. But jump yeah. into the pairings with me. Just tell me okay. what, what our viewers can expect of today's championship round in the A group, please. Last Thank round, you. pairings are insane. We <laughs> only have gems, so I love this tournament. But right. our key matchup for the group A is Hakapian versus Benjamin Bok. Well, let's just jump into that game because I gotta tell you, uh, Benjamin, no me gusta. I mm -hmm. do not like what uh, Ben has done in this game. Essentially, uh, White sacrificed a pawn, a, a very nice strategic sacrifice because he's got domination of the position and the extra pawn is not meaningful mm -hmm. over here on the queen side. In the meantime, all of the pieces, the black pieces are all stuck. And what um, Aram did was very nicely he continued to strengthen his position. It must be strategically position. winning for White already. Absolutely, yeah. And he, White, is threatening, you know, either to reposition his queen to go to g6, or to more simply just yeah. shake things up on the king side with g4 and h5. So this position, uh, the current game position, I have to tell you, looks, in my eyes, dreadful for one of our tournament leaders. Yeah. So and Benjamin for the first trouble. time, Aram looks happy. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't story. blame him because <laughs> he's got a great situation. And uh, tell us about the pairings in the Group B. Group B, we have important matches today and as also we also mentioned, Andrew Hong made a draw already versus Brandon Jacobson and key matchup for this round is Lamasov versus Mikhailian. Mikhailian Oram is just behind uh, Semyon and then here you can see that it depends what kind of a result and who's going to grab the uh, leadership. Semyon have five and a half points and then uh, Arman has five points and just behind them. Well, that's interesting as we uh, uh, take a look at the line score. Let's take a look at the position there. Uh, it 
it's kind of a, a very strange looking position to my eyes because we've got a dragon, not unusual there, with both sides of castle short, but somehow the A file uh, is open. Normally in a dragon, I'm used to seeing the pawns on A7 and B7. Yeah. Kind of hard to open up the A file when the pawn's on A7. In this particular position, I do feel that white's for choice. I mean, a lot of action is going on on the queen side. And moves like rook A4 and rook A1, I would find natural for the first player. And I just feel like they just well, made a move. E5 and knight B3, I believe, happened. White has to be for choice. And you said E5 was yeah. his play? So let's Arnold put that played on. E5 and knight B3 was played by Lamassov. Right, very quickly. Now it, it by the way, changed the position totally, right? The totally. structure is different. And most probably, black has to push D5. Exactly. Um, I'm just looking at some tactical sequence. It, it, it looks like a massively confused moment mm, here. Knight c2 is also possible, yeah, sir. Sorry, at what moment? Can I play knight c2? Yes, certainly. Uh, Bishop takes, knight takes on, on e, a1. a1. Bishop takes on f6. Takes on b3. Um, I, I kind of lost count. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we're, we're, we're playing a game of suicide chess. No, you're you're, you're like, doing good here. Chop, chop, you're chop, doing chop, good. You know, like, because uh, you're attacking on F8, unfortunately. Ah, gotcha there on that one. Um, yeah, uh, it suddenly, be, the, the move E5 uh, kind of created this uh, violence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the position, In right? The position. It felt like quiet and we wanted to play Rook A4, right. Rook A1. Yeah, nice strategic, strategic battle, but and I it just blew up. I have a feeling he, want, he wants to sacrifice the pawn on b6 and maybe take on b5 and then play d5. If you take on b6, just retreat the... Something of this nature. Yeah, something of the... Because black has to do that. And now if you take it, then rook c8 is possible. Sure, rook c8 and... Now you uh, cannot play c3 because knight d3, I have a double attack. That's a, a nice fork, that, that's for sure. The desirable bishop c5 could walk into queen takes, and that's two pieces for a rook, and maybe black is for choice in that uh, situation. I do um, believe black will equalize that. Will equalize. Um, the players have been fighting hard. Eight really, really great combative rounds. Today, the ninth, tell us what they're fighting for. Let's start with the eight group. Players are fighting for uh, great, great prizes, prizes. actually. Hello. First uh, place is $6,000, second place is $4,000, and third place is $3,000 for the group A, and then rest of the players are gonna get some nice prizes as well, and total prize fund of the tournament is $22,000. Nice, and uh, for the B group? For the B group, first uh, place is $4,000, second place is $2,500, and third place is $2,000 with the total prize uh, fund of $14,000, and everyone in the tournament will get some nice prizes as well. Thank you, St. Louis Chess Club. And as, we, as we're uh, beginning our broadcast, a few games have already uh, been completed. Uh, two draws in this group here. I want to just take a quick gander at the game between Andrew and Brandon. Again, this game has already been drawn. Uh, Groomfeld. Are you a Groomfeld player? I do play yeah. Groomfeld with uh, black. Blippet. With black. Yes. Are you being, it's funny how H4, uh, mm -hmm. uh, H4 has taken over in some of these. We uh, talked about it felt. yesterday. You yeah. remember H4, A4 moves. And check this yeah, out. This familiar. is like, this is going to be a crazy game. Now, whenever I see completely crazy, and we're going to see completely crazy, let me assure you, I have the impression that it's preparation. Like these guys know what they're doing. It seems like both of them know they're on one side. I, check I this think room. in Groomfield it's important to know your lines. If oh. you're playing it, you better know it. Absolutely. So check this room, uh, be prepared. Queen d5 check. That has been blocked. <laughs> Here's what I was saying about crazy. If you take the rook, the knight g5 check and queen takes g4 will and occur. And it has a lot of compensation. Like yes. Like has a lot of compensation there. And uh, the players, uh, by the way, quickly reached this position before they even started to slow down. So again, all preparation, 
all craziness, but nonetheless, preparation check that out. I know, and look at this. Should we try to call it or no. it be? <laughs> this is just this is what you would just call you know prep, and <laughs> amazing prep at that. By the way, check that move out. Wow. Queen F8, uh, just pinning. Blood the, being the stubborn. Yeah. I don't want to take my knight. From there the he center. goes. Knight takes e5 and check this out. Bang! Again, uh, spectacular, yes, but still, I would say, in the player's preparation, including up to the move c3 sure? and knight takes e4. Yeah. Um, I'm, is I don't there know. any chance you know the line? I do not know this line, but again, I have just seen so many of the players, like just. <laughs> Everything just gets like uh, new dissolved. generation. Stuff, I know right? exactly. Check. They've got their chess engines, man. They figured it all out. Queen f3. Chess is easy. Check. Check. If you take on a6, rook f8 is coming. That's why you gotta move your king. But that's still a lot of pieces for the queen, right? Absolutely. Queen e4. Now we've got uh, I have a our feeling own trumps. If you take the rook, then take the bishop on a6, the problem is that your king has uh, no squares to hide, and then slowly I'm going to check, 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 and eat, eat, eat all, all the pieces. pieces. <laughs> check, check, and yeah. There is no good defense uh, other than check, like perpetual, because I'm attacking on g6. Of if course. You, uh, king g7, then knight. Take C6. Otherwise, yeah. No, you better take the perpetual at this point. By the way, I'm going to break away from uh, the draws because we have we a decisive have a game. When we came in, we said a marquee matchup had to be one of our tournament co-leaders, Benjamin Bach, and he was up against Aram, who had drawn all of his games, so he didn't expect to suddenly be in a situation that he was losing, but... By the time the players reached this position, mm -hmm. I think Benjamin had just suddenly come to the realization that his position's terrible. Also, you got to note that, look at the time, Oram has one hour versus three minutes. Yeah. It means it was a preparation, deep preparation for A Aram. very, very nice preparation uh, by Aram. And for Benjamin, uh, this move smacks of desperation, and unfortunately for Benjamin, there's a beautiful... Um, a tactical shot right here. You take giving away the rook. Please take my rook. Discovered check attacks the queen and when you put the queen back in the way the old check and the queen is left unprotected after the king is forced to move. So you can't take the rook. Now you've got to move the, the queen. Uh, by the way I was thinking that he was going to take mm -hmm. it as well because you still fit. This is nice. This yeah, is sir, nice today too. we're in shape. We are not missing this move. No, no. <laughs> this is really nice. This is actually a very beautiful uh, shot. E6, discover check. You're breaking down uh, these two pawns that are, are, are shielding Black's king. And wow, here it's just like... Which, this is just over. Well, what move doesn't win uh, suddenly at this point? Takes. Oh, takes. Finally, this move C5. Too little, too late. Check. Is that double checkmate? It is a checkmate. Uh, well, it's such a uh, beautiful checkmate, but it's a double yeah. checkmate. That is insane. So I think I only occurred in my games once where I gave checkmate to mm -hmm. my opponent which was a double <laughs> checkmate. And in this case, the bishop as well as the rook are attacking the king. Very cute, and uh, for Oram. Fantastic. And very unfortunate for Bok, who was leading the tournament, and most probably he's not gonna tie anymore for the force. Well, that is certainly not gonna happen, nope, as he uh, goes out. Um, while we're uh, in this uh, tournament, we'll uh, take a look at two. The, uh, games that were drawn. Ranuk, uh, he came in today's round also tied for the first mm -hmm. with Benjamin Bach. He was up against But uh, he his decided countrymen. to play safer than Benjamin <laughs> Bach and also didn't, fortunately for him, didn't walk into preparation. That is for sure. Uh, th this whole line I have uh, seen, oh, Alexander Onishuk 
playing it as uh, black in multiple games, mm -hmm. and somehow he always defends it. I always find it awkward to play the black side of this uh, particular line. I like playing black side. Do you, this one? Yeah. Uh, it, it, for, for, for me, I, I don't have a, a good feeling uh, I almost got like winning position. The problem with this position that you feel like, oh, finally I'm pressing, not uh, equal, and then uh, it has its own like white has its own weaknesses, right? A five pawn sure. usually drops, and uh, the problem is that sometimes black, uh, white has enough to make a draw in without a pawn. E even because with of the resources. their active yeah. active position. Right, the double rooks, uh, the two rooks on the open file, uh, pressing against the pawn on c7 by the way, which is nicely protected, not once, not twice, but thrice. And uh, wow, okay, the players kind of reached their maximum and mm -hmm. then they uh, shuffled back with they their They decided game. it's enough for us exactly. for today. Uh, Ilya Nizhnik, he did not achieve what he wanted, uh, all draws. He instead he almost lost did. <laughs> yesterday. And the irony, uh, of his game yesterday, all the games were drawn, except for his game, which he lost. <laughs> and he Very had been up to that moment, uh, uh, drawn all of his games, and today he drew his eighth out of nine, and his game with John Burr. Well, there was just not much into this game. By the way, let's go back to the other group because we have we another have decisive a, Look at Bidisavlovich beat Elshan Maradabadi. And Elshan with, with the black white pieces. Yeah, played the scotch. So it goes to show that Elshan was in a very fighting, uh, combative move. Knight D2, a major, major move uh, in, in this uh, very, I want to say topical scotch. Uh, the scotch is about 100 and, well, maybe closer to 200 years mm -hmm. old. It is a tricky and move, but the, the problem is that if black knows, everything equalizes easily. Well, yeah, well, equal easily is tough. C2, C4 is a major move here. Uh, knight D2 is obviously a key alternative. The crazy part about this knight on going to D2 and why I've always avoided this as white is usually it's about this knight. So C4, knight B6 is a major move. C4, bishop A6 is a major move. And the whole idea is you want to drive the knight to B6. Whether or not you're losing after that, that's a different, or worse, it doesn't matter. But that's the whole purpose of this line of the scotch. When you play the move knight D2, and, the, and again, the reason why I've always shied away from this is because of this mm. move knight F4. Your bishop is temporarily blocked and it doesn't matter. You it's can a move nice queen. move still. Yeah, and the knight finds a better square on e6 as you're ready to go queen to b4. Yeah. But okay, let's see what happened. Knight to d2, queen e6, knight to f3, bishop c5. All of this is very, very standard stuff. White has achieved what he wants, by the way, which was mm -hmm. to drive the knight to the b6 square. Now he's hoping that with the move knight g5 and maybe a little tickle, yeah. You know, the, the, the queen will get, find itself boxed in. Ooh, ooh. g3, h5. Uh, I like this idea, a5, a4, uh, which is a very typical after knight bd2. Yeah, but this is, well, okay, hold on. This is like, a, it, it's a very strange thing that white is doing. Uh, normally, <laughs> how do you say? Uh, there are there are zones, there are sectors, there are there, there are areas where you play, and yeah. there's areas where I play. So, for example, you have a majority on the queen side, I have a majority on the king side. You get to play on your majority, I get to play on my. Look at what. Where is White playing? In this game, White's playing in the center. He's playing on the queen side, but he's also playing on the king side. In other words, he's spread his forces really thinly because it's sort of like mm -hmm. he wants to control the entirety of but the board. The, the problem with this position is that, yeah, you're playing in all, uh, like everywhere. You, it feels <laughs> like you're active everywhere, but uh, it, those not, are weaknesses. Yeah, in the position. Yeah, sure. And I put uh, my pawn on a4, which is great, which means creates c4 weakness already. And rook h4 is actually protecting c4, not exactly. attacking. Exactly. It's more of a, a defensive 
Okay, let's see how, how the, here we go. Whoa. Okay, so the idea behind rook takes c4. d5. Exactly, d5. Oopsie I think daisy. Elshan just missed it. And then check it. Uh, They're losing an uh, exchange. Exactly, black picks up the exchange. So we can't take there. So knight takes c4. So bishop takes h6. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Is that sacrifice even I mean, needed? if I play knight e3, for example. What's knight e3 may be bishop to d3, but I, I, I hear you loud and clear, because that's like one of those... Knight f5 is even possible. I, I'm not right. saying it's the most precise one, but even if I play that, what you're going to do, right? Exactly. Well, guess what? You, you from your lips Teammate. to his... Uh, uh, Teammates understand whoa. each other. Oh, my God. Queen take, if that's the best, what do you think? If that's the best, something is wrong, oh, right? Knight g2 is possible as well, Knight by the way. g2 yeah. check. That was what Elshan didn't like. So he and decided... And then h6 is hanging, d3, I'm taking on d3 and h4. He, 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 he ends up uh, sacrificing his queen, does Elshan, but no. <laughs> Crazy, crazy wild game. Oh, yes, we sir. have a guest in studio. Begum, I'm I'll leaving. See I'll oh, see you later. Oh, you seem very happy about oh, it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lunch, baby. See you in a bit. <laughs> okay. We're waiting to look at to show up now you can see the players and we have two more round uh, two more games remaining in group a let's take a look to akshat's game it feels like white is doing good um akshat's king seems very weak and knight on h5 is great and queen is attacking i like uh Batsurin's position more now we have Luca in the studio. Hi! Hi, Begin. How are you doing? Well, doing good after a win. Always yeah, finally! Uh, it's a good feeling to finish the tournament with a win, right? Yeah, always good to finish with a win. Uh, it's back to 50%. Yeah, and yeah. today's game was kind of interesting and it feels like it was easier. I mean, not necessarily easy. It was a pretty complicated game from the beginning. Can you so, uh, explain what happens? It fe it feels like this all our theory well known. No, no, online. no. It's not. I mean, it is probably a theory, but not well known. At least not to us, I guess. Like we were both playing out of head. I don't so think we played squash. E6, I saw you were uh, spending a lot of time. Uh, was knight d2? A I mean, surprise he doesn't for you? play. He doesn't play squash at all. Mm -hmm. So you didn't prepare at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So After then knight d2 is. It's kind of a rare move, but. I do understand. Uh, remember, we have some idea like a4, a5, a4 as I, black. I don't know. I forgot. So my idea was to play queen e6, so mm -hmm. I can develop my bishop also and just develop my pieces and then see what happens. Weren't you afraid mm. that you can kind of? I don't of think that should be dangerous because he can never really play knight e4 mm -hmm. because pawn is hanging. It's always hanging, right? Yeah, it looked good after bishop c5. I think actually the line goes instead of knight f3. Mm -hmm. That there is some c4 move here, so like c4, knight b4, and then some like knight f3, knight, queen g6. Knight knight I think knight f3, okay. queen g6, but I might be wrong because I didn't really check it today at all. Should I play king d1? Just I, I actually think that might be the line. Yeah, but like I, I, I played not, some games as well. Oh, yeah, like American <laughs> Cup, right? <laughs> I'm not sure, yeah, okay. I'm not gonna and, tell you, right? Okay, <laughs> so so. C4. Okay, very logical moves. It so, feels like yeah. white is doing all the logical moves and actually white is pushing. And usually if you put your pawn in h5 and develop your rook, you should be fine in such uh, positions, right? Well, the thing is that I'm pretty fast with my development and if I can somehow develop attack on his c4 pawn, yeah. then that's going to be my counterplay and white can also get in trouble like what happened mm -hmm. in the game pretty much. Yeah, I was thinking of h5 instead of g3, h5, if you play bishop a6, rook h4, hmm. then can you take... I, okay, I don't what remember exactly, but maybe d5, or, d5 is my idea in most positions. d5? Yeah, it if feels weird to look at the position from white's angle, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, if you take, I think end games are fine for me, like I can always just take, take, cd6, it's pretty, uh, pretty equal-ish. Equal, sure. Yeah, I mean, like I can, no I can castle. I actually like the position for black even. 
like all the end games because I'm mm -hmm. gonna push d5 at some moment. My yeah. pieces are active and he's usually in he scotch. Whenever you exchange your yeah, exactly. queens, you should be it shouldn't be dangerous for me. Absolutely. So he chose to play g3. Yeah, after g3, I was like, I can play bishop a6 first, mm -hmm. but then b3, and now a4. I'm not even having any concrete threats now because even a b a b bishop c4 is not a threat because mm -hmm. my rook is hanging, hanging in check. On a yeah, so I would need to castle first and only that even have mm -hmm. a minor threat. So like. I felt like a4 should be the best move because, I mean, he can still not develop his bishop from, from f1, obviously, because mm -hmm. pawn is hanging. They are behind development for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. That was my point. And I'm curious, would you consider rook b1? Yeah, yeah rook b1 is actually one of the most I thought about, but like, I usually have maybe bishop a6 first, now yep. b3, and now I have queen g6 as idea. Like, I don't know whether I was played here. This is hanging, right? Queen yeah, there's actually. Probably, and then okay, we yeah. play this end game. Most probably, it's the best that White can do because I felt like after g3 he's already late. Yeah, because you are like, developing yeah. faster, and a4 is a massive trade. Bishop a6, and if you're not on time to actually solidify c4 pawn, you should be better. Yeah, Black what you're saying makes a lot of sense because end game with the pawn on e5 seems better for White. Like only bizarre. if I manage to exchange e pawn for like mm -hmm. pawn c7 or something like that. Mm, that's alright, like equal at least for black. Sounds good. But yeah, h5. I must be waiting for. I thought he's gonna play h5 mm -hmm. or. See, this yeah. g3 looks weird, right? Isn't it? Like I h5. mean, he wants to play. He, wants, he has to develop bishop somewhere. So like. Bishop a6. It's pretty logical. This in is a way. all seems logical, and then it feels like here. Why should be fine? I mean, actually, a few moves back. So, yeah, now I have two options. One is to play f5. Yeah. One is to play queen e7. Okay. So, queen e7, I have a point of basically my threat. Not yet, but my idea is going to be what happened in the game. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Just taking here. Yeah, right? well, f5 is also threatening that, but it's even more concrete. Can like I just take it? That's no, if you take question. it, I like the end you game a lot. Just take and then this must be great. Exactly. And uh, or even like just take on f6 because you cannot even defend the, the c4 pawn. And I should probably play like okay, this. And then just, my yeah, but I like this. This is stuck here. D5 yeah. also come. But like, I don't remember what I was afraid of exactly here. But there was like, I, I just, think I can play g4, isn't it? G4. Mm, g yeah, g4 was one option. But then I can take on c4 with both. Maybe with it would be better for me to play rook f4 and yeah, that was actually yeah, rook f4 and, and now g4. G4, and it this seems was, strong. I probably wouldn't take, but like, I can, also if I take on c4 and he takes on f5, that can, that can get dangerous for me. Okay, Actually, you're not, in this, a not, in this, here. not in this position. Mm -hmm. There was, I, I remember The there idea, was some, whole idea ideas, was. Yeah. Okay, but queen e7 seems ver very solid. Yeah, but now after, I thought I'm already threatening knight c4, mm -hmm. but here actually after knight c4, rook c4, d5, white has rook a4. Oh my god. And, and after takes, takes, rook a8. And I'm just lost. That's not legal, unfortunately, because of <laughs> bishop, so I'm just lost. And that's so, why yeah. black has to play, and we just take it. Yeah, like two pieces then. Mm -hmm. So, so but you this have to remains play as a motive. Castle, yeah. castle for that reason, yeah. to protect your rook. And now it's again a threat. Now, bishop yeah. 5 obviously caught me by surprise. I was like, okay, what's his idea? Yeah, he told me, like, instead of bishop d2, that. Um, he went to play bishop f5 immediately after queen e7. But frankly, I didn't, consider, he, he it. I didn't consider it, to be honest. Like, and then his idea is to play bishop d3 and then protect c4 pawn? Yeah, pretty much. But my but idea is bishop generally d2 d5. seems like uh, very logical after castle, bishop f5. Now he's threatening to protect the pawn, and it seems like bishop d3, queen e4, as long as I put this yeah, position. Yeah, it seems I'm very dangerous for me, yeah. obviously, but there is uh, knight c4. Uh, was it, was it a blunder? Well, yeah, it was um, We definitely. also thought yeah, D5 he was a blunder exactly. because of this line. It feels like he just blundered knight c4, and this is the best try he has most really? probably. I don't know. Right? I, I felt it's more. We are not using the engine, but like it's out of desperation. I feel like he's tilted a little bit as well. I and think then bishop d3 is objectively the best option because now but I have to play d5 or knight d2. Yeah. Knight d2 I would play probably. It's just a very simple way to keep the pawn. Now queen d2, I think. Everything else loses on the spot somehow, loses one more pawn. Yeah. So yeah, bishop d3, queen d3, and no, I wasn't sure what to do. 
but like I'm pawn up. Yeah, d6 exactly. I mean, the problem is that king doesn't have any square. So Somewhere one pawn to go up. I'm gonna there. grab another one. Another it just looks so good. It's a loss. Yeah. So. So I don't know. He tried bishop h6. Text text. But definitely here. bishop f5 was a blunder. Because like Absolutely. after that, if he doesn't so. play bishop f5, but like rook c1, mm -hmm. that's fine position. Like it. It's a play. It's a game, right? Yeah, I would play some d5. Mm -hmm. So it was a huge blunder by Elshan, mm -hmm. and how do you feel about the tournament in general, Luca? Well, obviously it didn't start very, very well as I lost the first two games, but mm -hmm. I managed to bounce back. So I'm, I'm happy with my finish. Great. Uh, congratulations and good luck with the rest of your tournaments that's Thanks. coming up, <laughs> and I know, and good luck. Bisous. Thanks, Vegan. <laughs> I'll see you soon. So. Let's check Semyon Lamasov versus Arman Mikalian game. It's a very crucial game for Semyon because if he wins the game, he's grabbing the championship. He's grabbing the first place. And so far, he I like his position. He seems he's doing fine. It seems he's doing fine. If bishop d6, then rook d8, maybe even e5 is a great move. I like how knight can come to d6, rook, rook a7 and A1. I have a feeling he's gonna grab the game. This is uh, very grim, I would say, for I for, for, not, for, for, for black. This I is do not, not like looking good. I do not like knight H5, but it's not looking good. Let's take a look what happened. Right. Oh, so he did play bishop B5, as we talked about, but not D5, not but D5. rook C8 force. But I would prefer D5 if you wanna, if you are, Taking it, yeah. then I can play rook c8. It's a I totally different think situation. He must have been a, he, he must have been a fan of rook a4. That must have been because, like you say, if you get in bishop b6, rook yeah. c8, you're a happy camper. Yeah. You're you're threatening c2. It's not so convenient. But I think it was rook a4 that pushed. I wonder if I can sacrifice something. See the beautiful thing, and this is the advantage right here, right now. Of being a commentator, yeah, we get to sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's, I like them. it's so good. If we make them, it doesn't work. No, out. It we doesn't. take our move back. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, we get to take that's our why moves rook back. c8 was played and yeah. rook e c1. I'm protecting because okay. I and the pawn I cannot play c3 right. instead because of knight d3. Correct. So this is pretty much the only move. Now d5 was played, queen d2. Give me the knight. Uh, this Give is the problem. Give me the knight. Give me the knight. D4. Knight. I do not like all this idea. See, if my rook was on uh, D8, yes. it was protecting D5. Now it's right. not. Maybe it was. It wasn't uh, such a bright idea, actually, I'm, to play rook C8, D5 after it all. It was all the consequence reversed. of yeah. E5. Yeah. E5 kind of. Once you play e5, you need to play d5. Yeah. If you don't play d5 on then, time after, usually after c4, queen d2, c4, you suffer forever. Exactly. So it was all a kind of a consequence. One thing led to another. And maybe he just overlooked the strength I, of I, b, bishop f4. I have a feeling he look, overlooked rook a4 idea. Earlier. Instead Earlier. Of, he Probably his plan was to play d5, sure. but he forgot that after rook b4, he doesn't have a good square to it. Retreat with the knight. Exactly, exactly. So things are now working out very nicely for White. And after Bishop F4, Lamasov is looking great here. Queen takes sweet. If Knight D6, then we can play Queen C7. Well, even that it still looks. <clears throat> can excuse I play? me, very good for White. If I. Play this. You're protecting the bishop, the bishop on f4. I cannot take it. No. So yes, if I take see them, the, uh, the players have just played some moves. Uh, but queen takes yeah, b4. Yeah, sir. Are extra we missing move. something after knight d6? There should uh, be a move. Probably we are. Let's take what a could look. be uh, what could be clever? Maybe queen e7. So, yes, sir, queen e7. if you take the rook, I then you're protecting and I got on two b4. Pieces. Right. And if you take on b4, then something like maybe knight h5. 
Knight h5, Knight. and then Knight d bishop e5. Maybe rook, I have some. Rook, rook c6. I wouldn't then say. I wouldn't say I'm a happy camper. By the yeah. way, Bacon. I, I I think that Our white might still. Our camp is not going great. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> this is not a good good situation mm -hmm. for Black. But I think that Knight d6 is not going away either. Yeah. Like the game continuation. So still Queen b7. Yeah. Still looks pretty good, good for white. And then Bishop. Let's see. Let's update the position. What right. was played? He played bishop back bishop to d2. Bishop d2. I do not. I'm a fan of this move. I do not like bishop on d2. Yeah. That's so we talked huh? about uh, <laughs> like how bishop can be very useful in the center in general. Uh, right. Like controlling all these uh, diagonals. Uh, sure. Now bishop is not doing much. Probably the idea of bishop d2 is to. Go back, bishop f4. <laughs> well, protects the queen, and maybe in this particular case, uh, Semyon was thinking that he doesn't need the bishop to win the game. Mm -hmm. He wants to play rook a7. Absolutely. He wants to play rook a7, and maybe on a good day, you know, drop the queen. And by the way, knight d6 is still on tap. On tap so sure. let's see what happened. Rook went to d8, and that's it. They just is put it, one knight. Let's count the uh, pawns, yes, yeah, sir. I like white's <laughs> count. White's count. It seems like white has more, right? Yes, and more is good. Uh, white, white's oh, no. doing really, really well. And for Semyon, as he comes into this round, tight for first, right? Yeah. He's you can looking... see how focused and then a little bit nervous he is. Yeah, he definitely drilling it's down. It's a little bit of excitement of uh, winning, you know? Absolutely. Uh, especially uh, these championship rounds, it brings out the best. So we think Semyon's doing very good. Let's just jump to the game of action. I do not what? like Akshat's position. That's why <laughs> I, I touched it a little bit, but you did. Yeah, I the love these are... bishops. I love knight on h5. I love queen on c2. Cool. And then now he's opening up c c file. Maybe even this. I know I'm hanging f2 mid, but but like. Maybe even this is great for me. What uh, I, I'm still I'm still reeling from the body count. So continue the line, rookie seven. Most probably you have to take right. Okay. Should I exchange or should I play rook c one? Okay. Um, bishop b seven. Bishop b seven. Just to remind you, you've got you a, have a you, bishop you've got too. a king as well. I mean, there is a. I can take. Okay, I'll take. And again, what's the body count? Uh, still have some pawns. You still I know, you have it. many pawns. Still I gave F2. It. I, I was nice to you as well, right? Well, thank you. So, uh, worst case, I can just take on B7, play Rook F1. Right. Queen, if you take on Queen E2, Queen E4, uh, right. Queen F4, and right. I'm controlling the square so far. I feel like your king is weaker than mine. I I don't know why I have this feeling, but it feels <laughs> like I'm controlling. Because you've got the, the, the control of the f file. And, and then it, I'm threatening rook a g1, rook and g1. my knight is so cute on h5. On h5. Uh, crazy line uh, that you just showed there, Vegas. Most probably uh, there are many more nicer things. For example, queen a4. Right, and just I just wanted to see how they got here. Okay, queen takes d6, takes, takes. So this is a, so queen a4, very attractive looking move. That's a tempo, and you, you, you're, you're hitting the rook, right? So queen a4 is one move. What did you just play? Queen b1, queen b1. Was, queen the, what was the line where maybe I was being a little too greedy. Maybe I'll just, I don't know, go back and just, uh, you still have to prove yourself. Yes, sir, you cannot go back. I know, no retreats. That's, no that's retreats. Not, uh, no, 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 no fun. Uh, but queen a4, it, it, it's certainly a very forcing But you still can move. play queen e7. Okay. It feels like your position should fall apart, but it's not. <laughs> it should, it should. It should, it's uh, not falling apart well, so far. Well, I don't know. I still, I, I kind of like... Uh, you should be seven. Uh, sorry, Bishop David seven, yes, and I was going to go Bishop to C six. So, in case you take, I wasn't sure if to take with the Queen or the Rook, but I was kind of some, some you know harmonic convergence going on over here. Mm -hmm. 
that uh, actually I have a feeling that bishop on g2 is great but at the same time it's kind of he took on c5 boring very boring. Uh, boring we don't want to see this uh, we're not playing for a pawn a lousy pawn oh my Who word who needs the pawn uh, well yeah that's a good point uh, he sorry I'm just doing a refresh Yes. Uh, and he took the pawn or he did? He, he took the queen and... It's not been relayed, sorry. He did take the he, queen, you're he sure did about take it. The, yeah, we can okay. see it on, on the camera. She was there, yeah. And then he just took the pawn. Okay. Apparently he's a pawn grabber too. Oh, congratulations. We'll make sure he gets his gold card <laughs> and a membership to the Pawn Grubbers Association. A very stately and very mm -hmm. proud association. Sure. I'll never be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> we are accepting all members, by the way. <laughs> We're having a, a golden golden jubilee. Uh, Rook takes c5. Okay, I agree. It may not be any, everybody's taste, but at the end of the day, maybe white's for choice because he'll play rook a5. He's got, you know, he's kind of aiming over here. The and still he has five? some attack. It's not like if you don't right. have queens, you cannot attack, right? For example, you cannot activate your rook, uh, like rook b2, okay. because rook c7 is a, is a threat, and now you cannot play rook e7 because your bishop's on c8 is hanging. Oops. That would be Otherwise, it. you're losing your a7 pawn. You're not on time. Yikes. If you do that... Yikes. Mm -mm. Yikes. Uh, don't go there. So you're right. Uh, <clears throat> Some pressure for white, so Absolutely. white's so white's a happy camper. But I I can understand, but Suren's um, philosophy when it comes to this position, he's like, why should I risk? Right. Let my opponent to find how to defend <laughs> this position. It's not pleasant. And by the way, Semyon has done precisely what we thought. Uh, you know, he put his rook on the seventh rank. We know that's such a, a, a marvelous, uh, joyful idea. He also just dropped in with his queen. That freezes this. But and we're a pawn up. Yes. And yeah. queen he's seven. threatening to checkmate black's but queen. <laughs> I have a huge problem Please. with his bishop d2 idea. Why are you playing bishop d2? He might just be winning the position. That's why. I don't I know. Can I play bishop e5? I'm thinking of queen g3, but then you're on time. You're playing queen g5, bishop right? e5. Now okay. I want to play bishop e5. It feels like, imagine having this position with white, but your bishop on h2. Well, then uh, yeah, you, queen the queen would be, wouldn't uh, be even like... uh, under, under guard. Uh, just a second. I'm just having a, a thought that uh, what is my rook doing on c1? I'm not 100% sure I like the rook on c1. I'm looking. Okay. Um, may I? Just to ask the question. Check. Check. I, I think I'm happy to sacrifice my exchange. Yeah, well, guess what? You should be. <laughs> You're going to have no choice. <laughs> Can I play knight g3? Yes. Uh, my intention was to walk the plank across the board. And just take on e4. Would it work, knight e4? Again, the, the joy of commentating is that these aren't our pieces. <laughs> they're uh, they're yeah, the sir, opponents. I'm trying my best to I know, to unnerve create, me. I know, create some game. Uh, so far, the problem I'm is the bishop, right? Bad the, at that. Yeah, the bishop was like on some you know, more aggressive square on h2. It's more or less in the way. Pro oh, I should be more smarter about this position. Show me. Okay, knight g3, uh, you, king you, e1, yep. rook d e8. Rook david, david e8. e8. Okay. Okay, Yasser is trying to mate me, knight f5. Checkmate you. <laughs> knight Check. h5 is an option, by the way. I'm just saying ah, knight that, that that you could you could you have two ways of yeah. dealing with the threat. Okay, so you want to come down, uh -huh. right? Okay, give Queen me Queen G3? Rook. Yep. Queen G3 check. Please play ki King F1. Please play King F1. King right? F1. Knight, uh, knight E3? Oh, I'm doing great, Yasser, here. Queen G2? Okay. I just can't, uh, knight, I just can't take on F8, probably. 
uh, to to me, Begum, yeah. this position is a complete mess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how we did it, but we achieved I'm trying. success. <laughs> we got chaos on the board. Probably Knight H5 would be like objectively better, not to give away stuff. But, but okay, I mean, we can do it. We have license. Exactly. That's why we get the big bucks. They put us in. <laughs> they put us together, and they say, "Okay, come on." Make make the magic. Yeah. Our point is that it's not easy. And it's my a... point is that I just don't like Bishop D2. I don't think you should leave your king exposed, exposed like, that. like that. I think Bishop was protecting right. all the squares. Now it's not doing... Let, let's just remind yeah. everyone, however, if Semyon wins, he He's, wins the turn. Absolutely. That's it. Boom. He's got it in the bag. As uh, Akshat's uh, result would not be... Um, crucial As important uh, because he will be half a point ahead of everyone and also Andrew Hong drew his game already right now he has six points and if Akshat wins even like even though his position doesn't look like winning even if he wins it means he, he, he will won. have only six points as well okay. if Semyon wins six and a half uh -huh, gotcha uh, the move night F4 was played. I just don't like it too. When you're attacking, you don't exchange the knight. <laughs> what? No. You know, oh, you, you think, no, I'm not. No, I was thinking, so, so I was looking at some very forced line if I walk the plank. Yeah. Right. For example, rook here. you got to play knight e2 check, right? I think his because, idea is just, just to take knight, knight h3, actually. As well. Yes. Uh, I was thinking... Um, you have to go uh, 92 mm -hmm. and in this case Queen knight g3 take, is also possible right right you still drop in i don't like which version is better i feel like grabbing a pawn is better sure uh so knight f4 on the board with the idea of munch and let's see what can white do um in this position you know i i really despise this idea that the uh, queen may show up on my doorstep, something like queen g3, you know, your knight h3, your knight, oh, mm -hmm. knight e2. Sorry, it comes with a, a you, threat of knight e2. You showed it, by the way, earlier, you yeah. forgot. So in that case, uh, sadly, if I'm required oh, to take then, this. Then c1 is, you literally mentioned, I don't like my rook on c1, right? And I don't like the bishop on <laughs> h2, but I love the bishop on e5. A moment ago, we had the bishop in this very yeah. awkward square h2, but the bishop on e5 supporting the queen, that's a big... So in this moment... That's why I don't like the whole idea of his bishop d2. Why would you give the queen perfect square? Where? Perfectly. Okay, so just a second. So Samyon's got to do something here. Samyon has a problem. Him, Maybe king him. f2 he would think of. King f1 or king f2. If king f2, knight h3. So maybe king f1. Maybe that's a little bit more... Uh, then I can play actually d3. Is it a threat? Rook c7 or queen c7? Uh, d3, rook c7 or queen... C7, there is this yeah, guy Yeah, B2 hanging. is hanging. But this F4 guy is hanging. Is hanging. I can it's a mess. Maybe. It's it another is. mess. It's another mess. But I do I do believe we should consider after King F1. A different moves here, sir. I should have some moves here. Well, King F1 is uh, designed to stop the fork as well as to uh, <laughs> lessen the impact a move like knight takes h3 doesn't come with check, and maybe I could then trade the queens. He played, it looks rook like rook f1. f1. Oh. Okay, that's a very... I like king f1 for some reason. I know, it was like, a, but okay, he's saying, if you go check, I'll go king f2. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Um, he's bringing his rook to into defense. <laughs> into the defense, yeah. Rook to f1, but here black... I don't know. Bishop He's offering a draw, by the way. Why? Like, because uh, rook f1 is a draw offer. If you take is on it? h3, I take queen g3, queen h3, it's a draw. That is for sure. And maybe I do. even more. Probably he's not intending to capture, but. But I do not believe in this, not intending to capture thing. Why 
Diana, your knight's trapped. Knight takes h3, not king really. h1. It's not? Sorry. Why not isn't really. it trapped? Because it's my move. Yes. Let me think. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, knight takes h3, king h1. If I return to f4, your idea is to play queen c7? Possibly, and also possibly rook b7, because rook b7? remember, you're, you're probably going to have to play queen e5 regardless. No, most probably I will go queen c8. What? Or queen e, queen c8. I'll try. Oh, never mind. Yeah, sir. Never well, mind. Well, I mean, is this your idea? Maybe but it's not that great idea. You could play knight d6 first. True. That, that wouldn't work after knight d6. Then you're going to have to sacrifice an exchange. It's a mess. It's still, still one of those things where you. Oh, I'm not a sacrifice. <laughs> you're B7 <laughs> signing. Yes, yes, yes. Still, it's still a complete mess going on in this game. Let's just check in on the other tournament uh, just to see what's happened in that. Again, um, Benjamin Bach went down uh, to defeat, but Nicholas. Nicholas is in the driver's seat. If, if he were to win this game, no playoff. Mm. No playoff. Well. Knight h5. And after the move g6, we are in a situation where, my gosh, I'm just looking. These bishops are going to be so powerful. Must be winning for white, right? It, yeah, come it, on. It, this, it must be. This we know is so good. Both of the players are great when it comes to messy positions. Yeah, they like Nichol, it. Nichols loves. He he always tries to find some tricks. And then, as we saw, Pranav, even though he's yes. only sixteen, he loves to play yeah, and all tactics. these tactics. He he's a very gifted uh, player as well. So I feel like it's far from over, even though it seems like white is crushing. It does. It does at the moment. Um, this whole queen side, uh, obviously, uh, White loved mm -hmm. to put his queen uh, on f6. So anything like this is something. This is I, over. Yeah, I would really feel like uh, I cannot afford to play this way. Um, but if I don't take on d5, mm -hmm. um, okay, go ahead, crush me. Just kill me. Uh, I mean, take it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I'm closing my eyes. I'm, uh, I'm not looking at my king. <laughs> Queen F2 should be enough. Queen F2, uh, because you want to go here, right? Yeah. Ooh. I, I wanted to use this pawn as a distraction. It's okay, yes, yeah, sir, you yeah. can. I can take on and like B2 as well. On grabbing, B2. Grabbing oh, the no. pawns. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, de definitely. Uh, uh, here you mm -mm. trade and queen F6, right? Yes. Oof, oof, oof. It's all so bad. As you mentioned, you hate pins, but it's like it's not a pin, but you cannot really get, yeah, get out of it, right? <laughs> okay, so knight takes. Do you take? Yeah. Okay. So at take. least in this case, it's it's really awful. Rook B1. Uh, Rook D1, I'm sorry. Rook David 1. David 1. Okay. Uh, I have no tricky. C4 here. Is, a, is a threat. Uh, I don't think you have a... Yeah, it's... I, I mean, everything that I, I'm doing, I'm basing upon some, some use. I, I want to get some use out of... Uh, this pawn on b2. If it I, feels like Nico is very close to win the tournament. Could be. That's what I thought as we were coming into this game. That uh, Let me just refresh my board as uh, Mishra and Darush are playing. He, and he has taken the pawn, so he is inviting the line that we rejected. Uh, takes. And how takes. much time wonder, I wonder players have? Because it mm. seems like Nico is trying to find them move quickly the clock um, uh, it's not on our boards yeah let's refresh it so we can see no I don't see the time on the boards either that is upsetting we don't have the time but look how uh, 
nervous, Nico is. Like, you yeah, can see well, that. you can see. Okay, he's looking at the most direct rook takes, knight takes, rook to d1. So he's in his mind, I, this knight is pinned and he's ready to slurp a pawn. Maybe he could do, how about the slurping right away? Queen takes c4. So, yeah, he well, took the rook takes, rook, knight, knight takes. takes. So the, the question is right here, right now. It, it's funny that you have these attractive options. Rook a5. Rook a5. I rook have a D1, feeling everything is winning And this queen point. takes c4. So three very attractive. I would, I would find rook to d1 the most compelling myself because I just love pinning my opponent. But I you also be, love taking pawns. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that queen takes c4 might also mm -hmm. be a winning move. For white at this moment. So bishops are very strong. Well, I am I, grabbing I, all of your pawns. The knights are not uh, like they anchored. cannot find yep. a place. Like knight d7, knight f5 is technically not possible. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but again, the knights have no outpost. Put this knight on d3. It's a different story. Uh, again, you've talked. I've spoken about this numerous times on our broadcasts. Is this idea that the knights? thrive under protection. He just and rook played D1, rook D1. As I have a feeling from the way he played, he had just a few seconds left. Yeah? Yeah, he barely like made the move. Uh-oh. So we're, guess we're doing uh, some guesswork as far as the clocks are <laughs> concerned. So Rook D1, and very quickly, Knight. AC7 was played. Yeah, defending the Knight. And now the question, Queen he takes just C4. Take on, takes on C4. So the problem is the desirable knight e3. He immediately played rook e5. Yeah. I think they are in a huge time trouble. We just don't know it, huh? Unfortunately, we do not know it. Okay. Um, Both seem very focused. And rook e5 actually is a great try. Sure. You've got to defend the knight. Okay. So let's see if we can't just uh, uh, win this one. Can we play bishop f4? Or queen d4? That was a question for me. Was I was wondering, should I provoke f6 and then play bishop f4? Or we can play queen c4 back, by the way. Queen d4, <laughs> f6, queen c4. Now that's, we are threatening bishop f4. That's nasty. <laughs> that's almost like, you know, sometimes you see the orcas yeah. and the whale uh, and the uh, seals. And sometimes the orcas play with their food a little bit. But queen to d4, queen c4, that seems like a very, very nice move. Uh, not playing so fast, so maybe we were wrong maybe, about the time trouble. Maybe. It's just maybe they're nerfs then. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I wish we knew. Uh, we've got uh, the game of uh, Mishra and Darush. Let's just jump in and see what happened here. Well, guess what? Hmm. Uh, Darush is two pawns down. Oops. Just one, yes, sir. Just one, or is it two? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three four. Just one. But a nasty pawn, right? Yes. I mean, and you're... And then so many weaknesses, e6. Right. I mean, a7, g5 is hanging, too. Exactly. If you put the pawns on f7 and g6, okay, you're pawn fine. down, <laughs> but okay, something. But now you're pawn down and your yeah. your, 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 your structure is split. It feels like Mishra... Is should winning is taking the game today. Yeah, this is how he won the pawn. Also, Bimani didn't start the tournament that well, but uh, at some point he started to score and he, it's getting better. Leader. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, he needs to end the tournament when it's getting better. Right. And back to uh, the Nicholas game uh, for a moment, because once again, Nicholas wins his game. He, he is, is going to be the champion uh, of the tournament here. Rook e5. Sorry. So we were looking at queen d4, f6, queen c4. Take it away, Begum. What, what, how do you break down the position for white? I mean, we know white's in good, good shape. Good shape. Uh, but, you know, you still got to win the game. Uh, yeah, I well, like queen d4. I like bishop f4. I, I do believe many of your moves are winning. Okay, here. so queen d4, let me. Probably you need to move, move your away. queen. Yeah. And, and then I was thinking of rook e1. <gasps> rook e1. 
he won. You have a huge weakness, yeah, sir. Just I do, on. I do. Uh, I knew I was going to have to play this move one day or uh, another. I mean, if you play this move any day, <laughs> expose my king. I can't even go back rook d1 and then queen c4. Okay, but then I got out of the pin, and I mean, you know, if it, it, probably uh, g5 would be a great try for you. Then we'll queen c4 back. What? Queen c4. Okay, now you're now now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you sure? I'm not uh, sure. No, no. Now no. all of your pieces are hanging. But they were hanging a moment ago, and now for the first time, I actually feel like I can do something. I I can um, I can threaten yeah. a check and uh, knight e three check. Uh, we, 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 we let it go. We, we let it slip away. And what happened in the game? Oh, sorry. Let me just uh, refresh. Because he e5. played with d5. Queen d4 was played. I can see the queen on the dark, dark square. square. Okay. Queen d4, queen e7 was played most probably. So we're not that bad, yeah, sir. No. <laughs> uh... And then interesting moves are coming. Queen a7 is a very interesting move. Uh... And, and what, what was that line once again, if we go rook? F6. So I can take this with a check, right? Yeah. That looks nasty. Mm -hmm. That looks winning. That looks winning. Because knight takes, that's the pin. Takes, takes rook e7, but g5 doesn't give anything because of the yeah. check on e7. Yeah, that's just, uh, that's just great for, for, for white, of course. Okay, so Nicholas is, Nicholas is playing rookie one. Hmm. We're not getting an update from us. Oops, excuse me. Nicholas is looking Apologies. at his opponent, saying, "What do you want to do?" So we think from the from the uh, camera. Queen d four, queen e seven, rookie one was played on the board. F six, bishop d five is middle. Why did I play bishop d five again? What what was my move? I think you oh played my god, I got D1. obsessed with this queen c4 idea. About yeah, I mean, you were like the orca mind. there. <laughs> Enjoying the food so much, you forgot to eat. Yeah, we just uh, were talking about f6, this queen c4 idea. Yeah, right. bishop d5 is just winning. Exactly, bishop e5. Bishop d5, rook d5, rook e7, bishop. rook d4, and rook c7 is just winning a piece. Exactly. But uh, probably g5 is the move to try to play rook d2, rook b2 to, to create some play. Peace is a piece. Peace is a piece. I agree on that. Do, do, you, you know that great line from uh, Michael Tal? So Bobby Fischer mm -hmm. was being contemptuous. He played a move. He played f6. He did what? He How did play f6. How come an update? Queen d4. Queen e7, rook e1, e1 f6. f6. Nicholas is about to take on d5. He will never miss such moves. Yep. Okay. As uh, we think bishop takes d5, and check Nicholas is on is the board. And Nicholas is most probably winning the tournament. And we have another guest as, uh, well, the man who couldn't be defeated. <laughs> We're going to see you later. Bye. See you. Bye. As I uh, get, um, get Aram all set up, he played against Benjamin Bach and won a really, really nice, uh, nice game. We're getting uh, set up in studio here as we're not getting updated on that game of Nicholas which could very easily decide the tournament. Hi. Hey. Nice. Well done. I mean, you uh, spoiled, in the words of Anish Gary, a nearly perfect result. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I know that people wanted me to make the last throw as well, but uh, no, the game went really well for me, so. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, saving your best for last this championship round. We thought that you won a really wonderful game. Go ahead and take us through it. What happened? Sure. Um, yeah. So um, I usually never play Catalan, but I know a lot about it, as every single 
GM. Oh. Has to. <laughs> it yeah. seems these days everybody uh, plays. Right? Yeah. Mm, so this line is very common nowadays, and right. uh, I think I played the same against Abhimanyu Mishra. Okay. The same structure actually. Uh, so all this is very common. A3, and um, uh, yeah, I had the same game till this point. Yeah. I went knight bd7, which I believe is the best move here for black, just to, uh, you know, because if it white developed. takes, yeah, if white takes on c6, uh, you kind of are like, favor. welcome, yes, yeah. exactly, <laughs> yeah. because uh, uh, that's the weakness in right. our position, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you kind of, uh, in the game, a very funny thing happened to Benjamin, he kept the weakness the whole time. He just yeah. defended it, defended it, yeah. <laughs> and then he had no play. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, that's I the mean, whole point of this uh, structure. And uh, okay. before the game, I was thinking that if I go to this position, it yes. would be a good choice because Benjamin is known as someone who always, who is always in time trouble. Yes. So I can easily keep playing and kind of torture him. He'll exactly. him here. Yeah. Uh, we came into studio around about these this part. And I'm a pawn grabber. I love, I know. <laughs> I love being up a pawn. This is not one of my first loves. This is a position which I actually really kind of despise uh, for uh, black because he's so inactive. Exactly. And you, you can kind of, in a sense, just what you did, you measured your opponent. I think a lot of people can really <clears throat> learn from your approach. Uh, Drive Never. the knight Never. away. You Never. Know, like, drive the knight away. Get the knight out of there. Yeah. But all you're doing is, and we do have a, re Theodore, uh, our congratulations, Nicholas, has won uh, the game and won the tournament. But the move E2, E4 is giving Black everything he wants. Suddenly he does have a counterplay. So exactly. I really loved your patient approach, E3. And Maybe you'll agree or disagree uh, with me. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, the moment when I went knight before, yep. I uh, I did know that knight before is not a bad move. Right. Because in this structure, the main point is that that you trade the knights. Yes. Yep. What happened in the game? And my whole point is that now I want to go bishop e4, and let's say at some point h5, h5. <laughs> and you know this. Yeah, bishop b1. But <laughs> And then the queen gets to the h7 square. Exactly. So, exactly. And black cannot really stop it. Yeah, which is why I think Benjamin played the move g6 in the game. Exactly. And we got to a point right here, and I'm, I don't like black's position. I really don't like black's position. But I thought that the move h5 made your life easier. Because in a sense, he gave you the g5 square and you leveraged that square, you used it. Uh, had he played king g7, did you, had you worked out at this point what your breakthrough might be? Well, I was uh, hoping for g4, g5, and uh, f4 is always a move so yep. at some point. Uh, so, I mean, I have a free play. I can decide exactly. what I want to do. Exactly. Uh, Whether so you're not, you include rook h1. Yeah. Lovely. And in the game, it was a kind of a... It was quite the blow. I was actually hoping for h5 because uh, now I want to go this rook g5 idea. And I think uh, instead lovely, of yeah. king g7, um, I think he had to try this okay. and uh, after rook g5, yes, like c5. Although I know that this doesn't work, but I think it's just so bad and with no time uh, he had to do something. Exactly. Because after king g7, I just go rook g5 and the next rook comes as well to c5. Right. And uh, the attack is just uh, deadly. Yeah. Yeah. It really was. A, a nice uh, tactical finish at the end. I really liked this touch. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I did see that <laughs> E5. I did see that E5 was possible to make, but. but yeah. and you'd already ruled it out as uh, we uh, enjoyed the yeah, very. And the H6. After uh, Queen F6. Exactly. Yeah. We enjoyed that nice little tactic. Aram, like I said, you saved your best chess for the very last game. I probably Thank you. you're thinking, Thank you, yes, why isn't it double round robin? <laughs> now I'm ready. Now I'm in the yeah. form. How did you like it? St. Well, Louis uh, nice? yeah, yeah, St. Louis is always nice. Uh, I had uh, five black games and four right. white, so the definitely finishing with plus one is a, not a bad result. Exactly. And I did not lose a single game, so definitely I'm happy with the result. Feeling good.
Thank you. Good luck in your career. Thank very you. Very nice. Very nice. As we have, uh, we do have a tournament winner. As Nicholas, like I said, has won his game, won the round. We think that Mishra will also, uh, with this extra pawn, also likely win. Begum, where it's been, it's incredibly eventful. And by the way, as we just the position completely changed apparently. Let's take a look. Everything, everything has changed. When we left this uh, again, if Semyon wins this game, that's his first prize mm -hmm. that you've been telling us about all of these uh, days. Uh, first is first. He played rook f1, and then he just went back, knight e6. Why would you do that? F4, and white said, no more attack, no more attack. What are you doing? This queen is not uh, bouncing to the g3 square. Knight e4, and wow. Well, white I just, just don't has, like what black did to uh, their position in two moves, basically. White has uh, achieved just about everything he possibly could. This last move, queen, um, it's been working for 1,500 years. Went ahead, material, trade. So this move, give me your rook, give me this, give me this. Kind of just anything that forces a trade, like if I can get you to do this, my next move is rook b6, and that's two pawns. Not, uh, I just don't degree. understand move knight e6. For me, it doesn't make sense. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're in a situation where a move knight like knight e6, it feels a little bit like capitulation, mm -hmm. like you're not resisting. And it didn't work out uh, well at all for black after the sequence. Uh, I don't think, I think queen b7 is my move. It move-up, feels like black wanted to win the game. If they w didn't want to, probably they would play knight h3. It's just like, it's the only chance for Armand to the, share, uh, to tie for first, right? right? To win the game. By the way, I just want to say the players have made time control. And as I'm looking at the board, I'm looking at the position, why aren't I playing e6? Ooh. That's a really Everything is winning, yes, sir. I well, you want to be precise about it too, though, right? e6, just ooh. That's a killer. I do believe that uh, there's no chance for Armand to even draw this game anymore. No, no. It feels like we won't have any playoffs after all. <laughs> None. Uh, actually, it's funny. Uh, this feels like a puzzle rush kind of moment. What do you think? Uh, do you play queen takes f7 check here? Would you play queen takes f7? I think I would. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's see why not. Take, take, check. Bishop f8. Uh, no, no, check, bishop check. f8. Right. Then what would you, how would you proceed? Exactly. If I play bishop takes, uh, queen has to go back, right? Yeah. Because you're threatening. And then you just can't play rook a1. That's the... And bishop g7 is winning too, by the way, but the, no, like this is simple. Yeah, yeah, no, this is the best way. Rook a1, uh, rook, rook a1. Funny thing is that it's winning too. Invites resistance. <laughs> no, bishop, bishop g7. Bishop g7 as well. <laughs> ah, nice. So it does feel like e6 could win the game on the spot. And what he will take his time, but uh, he will win the game for sure. But what a spectacular finish in these championship rounds that the winners would win the tournament by winning the final, the, the ninth and final mm -hmm. round. E, uh, Semyon there, as we see on screen, carefully considering the move e6 as well as queen b7. Uh, that, that was my instinctual gut move just mm -hmm. because I want to play bishop takes f8. I want to uh, cement my... Uh, yeah. material advantage, but e6 looks best. Yeah, but I cannot believe how white played bishop d2 and, and black played knight e6. <laughs> Time yeah. scrambles to... Makes such... fools of us all, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, how did you like uh, Luca's game? You interviewed him and he was showing you 
uh, what he had intended. It seemed to me like Luca had, had actually prepared. He's that like, scotch. oh yeah, I didn't remember. Yeah, and then he's like, goes, after a moment, he's like, yeah, actually, you can play a queen. I think queen g6, knight f4 is a line, and this is. I'm like, interesting. Right, you, you can't me. remember. <laughs> you cannot remember. Uh, and then, and he was like asking me, yeah, but you have a like a game there, right? The I'm database. like, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, he knew your game. He, he, he was like, yeah, probably the American Cup, right? I'm like, I'm not telling Oh, you. my goodness. And of course he knows. He's my teammate. Right? Okay. So there you go. Uh, we do have uh, quite a number of results. Once again, Nicholas has won the tournament. And he did it in a spectacular fashion right here. This very nice moment. It was like everything came together for white. After the move, knight takes, rook takes, knight takes. Rook to d1, pins the knight to the queen if the knight moves. There and it was a very smooth game by Nichols today. He yeah. decided yeah. to just to destroy his opponent, basically. Well, in fact, because Nicholas is actually here, he's going to tell us how he won the tournament. Absolutely. And Dagan, we're going to lose you and replace it's you with guess. Nicholas. <laughs> As uh, we're looking at this game of Mishra for the moment, and again, Mishra looks like he's just got this game in the bag. Uh, one, two, three, four pawns versus one, two, three, four, five. Yep. And White's got the better minor piece in this particular case. A2, A4, Queen E4. All of these moves just play themselves. It's just so nice. You just uh, bring the knight to a, a better square. And, well, it's all... It's all one-way traffic for white at this point. So we expect uh, Mishra uh, to win. And here we are. We are we're honored by the presence of our tournament winner, uh, Nicholas. I mean, if you knew this was going to ha happen, you would have accepted your invitation even faster. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice. Tell us what happened today. You're, you're, first of all, just your mental approach to today's game. Uh, I mean, it, at the top, it was tied. It was uh, very exciting going um, coming into this round. Yeah, well, first of all, I wasn't expecting to win clear first because there was a four-way tie right? um, going into the last round. But yeah, I mean, I, I sort of expected this line by my opponent. OK. Tell us when uh, things got dicey or good. A2, A3, all standard? I guess D5 is the main move, but A3 is a... Uh... Oop, that was uh, my bad. Oop, sorry. Uh, I did something incredibly wrong. My apologies there. Where are we? What did I just do? <laughs> uh, I did something really wrong. Did you see what I did? I'm not sure. I did something really wrong. Uh, I clicked. I'm not even sure what I clicked. Maybe a previous round? I think we're in the previous round. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Okay, perfect. That was really crazy. <laughs> uh, I mean, normally uh, I make a, a, a mistake with the mouse. It's because I went, you know, five moves deep. Not that I went four rounds <laughs> previous. Uh, you were about to say that uh, standard is D4, D5. So you wanted uh, to get things a little bit off track early. Mm -hmm. A2, A3, does it have a history? Uh, I don't know the history exactly, but there was a recent game... Um is Vidler against Vidit in this line. Okay. So yeah, d5 is black's best move, of course. Knight c3, bishop e7. And yeah. now f3. So uh, you want to sacrifice this pawn because you think that the dynamics that you get from having the central pawn duo and, you know, a freer play. Yeah, so taking on c4 is not great already, I think. The main line is knight f3, castle, castle, h6. Castle, castle, yeah. Castle, castle, h6, yeah. Yeah, and now um, Zwiedler played knight h4, which is pretty interesting. And the, I don't know, the game goes on, but d takes c4 by him is 
pretty ambitious, I suppose. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I knew the standard setup is with H3 King H2, and the okay. main idea is to play Knight H4. Right. So I did all of these moves, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse Bless me. You. Yeah, thank you. So you did exactly what you <laughs> were prescribed: H3 mm -hmm. King H2 Knight H4, and you've got your prep on the board then. Kind of. I mean, I, right. I wasn't sure if I should stick to the same plan, given his. Um, a5, B5, Rook A6. It's a, yeah. it's a bit unusual, but his Rook can actually be quite useful along the 6th rank. Uh, yes, I saw it as, uh, as you say, a dual purpose. It's useful along, along the 6th rank, but also it's defended, mm -hmm. so I can play B4 and any kind of trades. I, I make B5, B4 potential. And also getting out of the way of the Bishop from yes. the G2. So. Yes, exactly. So not a bad idea, and he did... Yeah. Uh, consequently, play B4. Actually, in these situations, I have no idea if I should play knight A4 or knight A2. <laughs> but, I mean, both of my knights would be on the rims. So. <laughs> and you didn't, <laughs> in principle, you know, uh, I think every chess player has that feeling during certain games where you get this impression that you might be winning a brilliancy might be willing it, a brilliancy like and you know some chess authors will use your game as a brilliant or conversely the worst you might be losing a brilliancy yeah, and then, then you're going to play to move 60s so and they then don't put it and then they're going to show you show an example of this idiot who played in St. Louis, he puts his knight on A4 and H4, and you didn't want to allow yeah, that. I mean, it felt more natural to keep my knight closer to the action against knight. And not, and not, and not to be uh, the topic of discussion in the chapter on how to lose on chess, right? Knight E2. Okay, so you're a pawn down, but once again, uh, Black's got issues, right? He, mm -hmm. he still has to deal with this. I notice also, by the way, uh, you weren't anxious. Well, are you anxious to play knight f5? He's trying to undermine my center for yes. the time being, so it didn't. I mean, I kind of have to play e5, I thought, because if right. I go d5, then he gets a blockade on the dark squares with the bishop d6, probably. Okay. And he has some knight g4 ideas. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, because in the game, I thought it was. I don't know if, it, if this was the moment, so forgive me. Uh, can he sacrifice a piece? Yeah, I briefly considered that option, but then yeah, just take and then probably take on uh, b4 as well. Okay, a, b, a, b, yeah. Uh, take, take, yeah. And I said trade. Okay. Uh, I pause for just a moment because I'm not 100% sure how am I supposed to recapture, but okay. The knight. Yeah, and then what do I? Well, what's the body count? I do have three pawns, right? Yeah, and then I thought I could play knight of four, for example. Okay. Wow, you know I can resist anything except temptation. <laughs> <laughs> Every fiber of my being. But okay, d four is hanging. The the reason I said this is because in the game it kind of felt a little bit one way traffic. Yeah, you could have and changed then, the... And then I'm th sitting there saying, would the peace sacrifice have thrown you off kilter? Because uh, in the game, uh, I already started to really warm up to your position here. I think here you started feeling good too. It definitely looked nice for white, right? But actually, you know, you're not sure. Scoring the full point wasn't that easy. Of, it never so, is. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Uh, knight f four, but again, you know, it, it. These guys kind of feel like they're stuck in mud a little bit, and these guys look like they're, you know, potentially playing. Okay, it went bishop g five. The moment he played g six, I thought something was wrong. Now it felt like, yeah, yeah, yeah I spent. Probably about half an hour in knight h5 oh. uh, to induce g6. Right. But it looks a bit strange to just provoke g6 and yeah. just lose a tempo like that. Right. So. Uh, because it just felt that w black's 
position got too loose. It just, it, and tell me when you think he made a mistake or when it was gone. Yeah, so here, I'm not sure if he missed that after 95 have rook d4 or, because otherwise my pawns just look, just look a little uh, menacing. Target. Or, or no, I mean, yeah, so rook e8, I was kind of expecting this move. Okay. Yeah, and then another decision was whether I should play queen of three or queen of one. Right. And, and you decided on queen f1 because... Yeah, also keeping an eye on c4. c4. And f7. But you know, with queen f3, I can triple on the f file if I remove my bishop from right. c1. So right. Again, much oh. like 94, 92, I wasn't sure which one to go for. Exactly, exactly. It, it's terrible. You can sit there at the board and you can make these compelling arguments for queen f3, and you know, like you just said, triple, and then you. Do you mentally flip a coin, or did you just kind of come to the conclusion that actually queen was better on f1? It looked better to have the bishop open. Um, and yeah, I keep keeping an eye on c4 as well, so yeah. it can't be that bad. Right. Uh, again, just tell me when you think uh, life was just terrible. Uh, because here, again, it just felt like to us, we were looking for forcing wins at this point. We, we weren't even, uh, we, we didn't think there was a, a way for black to resist. In the game, it, there wasn't resistance either. Did you see any way for him to resist? I missed this rookie five move, actually, ah. because I, I, I thought I had bishop f4 when I went for this line, just yes. winning, but he has some tricks with rook f5 probably, and bishop c7, queen c7. Okay. And then if I take, he has some rook f2 check, and it's mm, not great. Uh, not what you wanted, uh, exactly. So you had more or less gotten here in your mind, and you thought bishop f4, but then you could, you found in the game this nice switch mm -hmm. that you did have, queen d4. Probably he should have tried f6. Okay. I think and then he wanted bishop f4. I'm not oh, sure. I was also looking at queen c5. Yeah, queen c4, queen c5. And he's sort of holding on for now, but it's very, very loose. Yeah, I he had the... I, it, 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 Begum and I, any time oh. we got the rook to e2, we were unhappy. We thought that e, somehow, well, yeah. I was sorry. I was starting queen of eight with queen c5. Oh, sorry, you were certain. <laughs> yes. Apologies. So yeah, that, that was a sneaky move. Okay, that's a sneaky move. You got me there. No question. So queen d4, queen e7, nice move, rook e1. Mm -hmm. And you're just losing a piece at this it, point. Exactly. And we weren't sure. We were guessing. What was the times towards the end? Were you both in a little time trouble? Yeah, or? we both had one minute for 10 moves or something. Right. We, we, we couldn't see from our uh, monitors. And, uh, yeah. I mean, the way he played in the end also made it easier. I thought he could have taken on d5 with a knight. Just right here? Yeah. Knight d5, queen d5. Rook d5, rook e7, rook h5, sort of trying to hold on. Yes. And it's completely losing, but right. at least he... Has a better version than yeah. the game, right? Yeah, it's still losing for sure, but uh, what you got in the game, rook g g7. Champion, champion, it sounds good, huh? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you already got your speech prepared for tonight's... Uh, oh, is there going it? to be a speech? Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, big ray. Oh, yeah. You're required. You win tournaments. You got to give a speech. You got to thank the commentators, first and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> your trainers, your family. But no, seriously, it feels good. It's a nice tournament, right? Yeah, definitely. What's next on your agenda? Uh, I'm playing a tournament um, in Silicon Valley. Really? So, yeah. It's Going out in to about Palo three, Alto? Uh, <laughs> three weeks. Yeah? What's the tournament? Uh, it's Rob by... Robin, a Swiss? Just a Swiss. Okay. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. And it's also the first time I 
crossed 2600. So Our congratulations all around. Really, really well done, Nicholas. Thank okay. you. Thank you. As we have a champion, first place, 6,000 bucks. Dinner's on him tonight. <laughs> Nicholas is picking up the tab, everybody. <laughs> They're yes. not so sure about that. Oh, welcome back, Begum. Uh, nice, nice game there. And yeah, as congratulations for his, uh, absolutely, uh, the A group crosses the 2600 barrier. Now, that is awesome. When I crossed the 2600 barrier, I want to say that, uh, that we had a world champion and his world champion was Anatoly Karpov. And Anatoly Karpov had won everything. He just wins all the tournaments, Linares, Tilburg, uh, all of these events in Yugoslavia, and there would be the, all of these events in the Soviet Union. He just won everything. And he was the world champion dominating the world of chess, and he was 2670. That was his rating. And he was heads and shoulders above everybody. Mm -hmm. I had crossed, let's say, 2635. And, you know, we thought there was a gap. You know, now they're 2800s. You know? <laughs> it's like he just crossed 2600. I'm like, oh, I remember I when I crossed 2600. Actually, a new generation is getting stronger and stronger. Oh, no question about it. Now we have, like, because you, because of you guys, actually, right. you're passing your knowledge, your experience, right. the wisdom. And, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Search for... <laughs> Trying to get in as many accolades as I can here. Yeah. But no, for me, what I think the huge difference is uh, with today's generations is actually two things, and it's a factor of the computer, of course. But the first and foremost is just the information. I know this sounds weird, but the databases of games, today you have a million games or more, and you, you, you got all of the resources. We fought, I mean, really, really hard just to get the bulletins yeah. of the rounds of I the remember tournaments. I remember there is a documentary about uh, Boris Galfand, yeah. one of my favorite chess players. Yeah. I like him as a person, too. Right. Uh, so I was watching the documentary where it, he said that there were times when he was fighting for this, like, uh, journals or, or books and then he exactly. was like letting the library know that hey I want one can you please keep one for me exactly and exactly can you imagine the situation right now I, Absolutely not. I that's exactly what I fought <laughs> for and and it was probably much harder for me he is coming from Belarus is coming from Seattle and I went to the Seattle Public Library and literally this massive public library, it was a wonderful uh, public library in Seattle, uh, probably had about 30 chess books, many of them were from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Here I am playing in the 70s, I couldn't get anything. So, yeah. so first and foremost, it was this information. We got all of these tools, which is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Then the second thing I experienced, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one, I was 13, years old, playing chess, nobody wanted to play me. I mean, nobody wanted to play me. Why? Well, they really didn't want to beat me. Yeah. But they especially didn't want to lose to me either. <laughs> That's why so, it's better not to play at all. Exactly. Yeah. So, but today, thanks to the chess engine, you have an opponent 24 hours a day, the engine also never says no. Chance. Online, you could play all the time. 24 7, basically. So, right, and so also, the information and the competition. Yeah. Also, in, in human level as well, like past experiences, like we learn from them, and of then course. you guys pass it uh, to us. And then, for example, now you're teaching me, right? Some yeah, things, sure. uh, telling me some things, that's how we can get the information faster and more. Efficient. Exactly. Yeah. Because some things you guys had to sit down and learn right. yourselves. Now you're just telling us and we are saving so much time on that. Absolutely. Uh, let's go uh, to this huge game uh, of Semyon. Uh, uh, all he, well, all he needs. 
with victory, he wins the championship, and we think he's got it. He's very close. Uh, There's no way. I, I would be shocked if he messed this up. There's no way for him to mess this up. You would be... <laughs> I know. We saw Bok, but like it was a different situation. Yeah, right? so here... It's, How can you do that? You it, should try really hard. Like, really, yeah, you should you find the worst moves. Like bishop e5 is an interesting move. That is one of the moves. I, I'm a pawn grabber, so I was thinking takes takes and bishop e5. Yeah. I think. Now, if I think Samian is thinking that bishop e5 is more uh, precise. precise. Uh, I think his idea is that if you take on e5, I take on f7, and then queen e5 checkmate. It's, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. That uh, he definitely has that inner mezzo. Um, weird. That's weird for me because, okay, I would think that after queen e5 check, I'm winning as white. Yeah. But I would think to myself, well, can't I take the pawn first. You need to have a better winning uh, Please. position, right? Yeah, right. But queen c5, you can be winning, but how are you winning? Not here, but like without taking on f7, but how are you winning that? Because now you need to find precise moves to win the game. Um, okay, so... Queen c5? Queen c5 check, so takes, takes, something like this, okay. right? Yeah, I... Uh, I okay. know that your position is better. Well, of sure, better for sure. But you were looking at uh, forced winning variations. F six. Forced winning then variations. Then A eight is coming. That was the idea. Um, so yeah, I'm oh, confused. Oh, they played that out. Yeah, E seven and Rook A one is most probably just winning the game. Okay, he. Well, now why isn't our system updating? I have a very hard problem. Yeah, sir, you got lucky. I know. Because uh, you have me <laughs> now. <laughs> and I get so it. so he did play bishop e5, correct? Yeah, and then e7, rook e8 was played as well. So he did yeah, play queen, queen c5, c5 check, check. Uh, e7, rook e8 was played. He's just taking his time to make the move. This is on the board. Yeah, this is on the board. Oh my, okay. So rook a1 is just win uh, rook f e a1 is just winning the game. Why is it just winning the game though? I'm, I, Isn't I, it? Oh, F6? never mind. No, f6. Rook a8, king f7. Wait, right? we talked about it, but I forgot that king e7 is taking. Wait a sec. Hold on. Are He's, you winning? No, he just played a move like rook to d7 or something. Wait, oh, rook d7 and h4. Sorry. You, they cannot c5, play. c5, check, takes, takes. Are we missing One. something? <laughs> it's weird because you cannot play rook d7 because my rook is on d3. Yes, yeah, uh, sir. What well, was played? I, it's hard for me to tell. Oh, from he the took on f7 and king h8 was played. Like Why takes here? That? Yeah, it was. And then Ta king h8. A? Okay. Rook a7 and h5. I think that's. Wait, why didn't you take on f7 with the rook? Rook e7. Um, is he? So you're saying he took the pawn, yeah, and then instead of rook takes f7, he played king h8, he played rook e7? Actually, maybe our broadcast, uh, maybe our transmission was wrong. Maybe he took on f7 indeed and then played bishop e5, which is queen much c5, more sensible. takes, takes, yeah, and then rook they've e7, reached h5. The same. Yeah, they've reached the position, but through a proper move order, I would say. Mm, yeah, now it makes sense. Yeah, now it definitely it makes, makes So h5, and now we look for uh, just the winning um, moves here. So the idea behind h5 is the desirable rook e8. Black is still resisting us with the move king We talked H. yesterday, as long as you do your best to resist, maybe some... Uh, like something uh, some something luck will, will uh, come your to way. To be honest, it's not that easy. For example, in, in this position, if I play rook d7 and grab the f7 pawn, most probably... Uh, you... He played rook a1. Uh, just a second. In this position, after h5, he played rook a... One, one. king yeah. h7 was played. King h7, I suppose I'm just going to double. I love 
By the way, I actually already there. made a draw. So he? he's not catching uh, no. up to leaders too. Most probably we can uh, say that Samyon is going to grab clear first and Andrew Hong is clear second because Akshat is not catching them. That's yeah. right. Six points. I think we do, by the way, have rook a7 on the board. Yeah, king h7, rook a1, 7. Yes, and this feels like uh, it's, it's really going smoothly now. Uh, I, I see even a, a checkmate. Let's just put some thing on the board. I was going to go... How do I do it? Um, I don't know. Something like this, 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 this. That's a key checkmate. Yeah, oops. It is indeed. So, yeah, I see that after rook a7, you're just prepping the move rook on e7 to uh, e8. And you can see our money. Yeah, is it's like, so ah! That's what happens when you play in ID6. You, right? Then you. You just blame yourself, why didn't I take a draw, or at least try a knight h3. Exactly. It's a very painful moment, like painful realization that you could do better. Right. You knew better, but you didn't do that. Exactly. And we see here uh, those death throes, those moments when you just say, oh, why am I, uh, why did I wake up this morning? <laughs> um, well, two extra pawns. I think it's uh, too late. Dominating position, by the way, uh, I would, and I'm, I'm and not kidding, I would actually consider uh, grabbing a third Yes, pawn. sir, funny thing. Yes, if please. I play, for example, rook d8, I'm sorry, I grabbed Yes, now. right. I can just play rook e8. As well, you're not... Uh, takes queen, takes, and then boom. Boom, yeah. It's Precisely. just so winning, like he, it might, is so he, winning. he might resign. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Uh, no, I think he actually played rook a1. We'll put that on the board Let's here. Let's update. Maybe yeah. we'll... So rook yeah, a1, we're a behind, king so. h7, rook a7. Let's say j just what you said, rook here, and something along those lines of what you're saying is that uh, any time you get to pick up this bishop... Unfortunately, you cannot avoid that pin. No. In the end of the day, pins are always bad. I told you already, I hate being pinned. I, uh, those eternal pins where you know your rook is on, your opponent's rook is on the eighth rank, and mm -hmm. you've got a bishop on f8, and he's got a bishop on h6. Your king can't move, your bishop can't move, and you have a piece that defending. It's just the, horrible. The, it's oh, like choking. You feel like you're handcuffed, you're tied <laughs> up, there's nothing you can do, and you feel this physical helplessness. Um, physical pain. <laughs> <laughs> Hate I it. think chess is cruel. Chess is cruel. My friend Jeremy Sel Selman uh, says, you know, chess is hard, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> That's so depressing, yes, I know, sir. but he's so right, too. Oh, my God. Uh -oh. Look how hurtful is that to right. play h4 like this. h5, h4 on the board. It's a funny story, but, like, my sister told me she used to play chess as well. She's like, I can see my position. She was playing a game mm -hmm. with another, um, like, uh -huh. Uzbekistan National Championship or something with another girl. She's like, I can see my position is winning. And then my opponent has a trick. Mm -hmm. But my opponent started to pack her things. Literally, ah. she was putting everything. Right. So her idea was to trap my sister. She's like, OK, she yeah, made Yeah, like, oh, it's in. all done. Yeah, it's over. Let's yeah. get going. All this uh, One last trick. expression. Yeah, I got like, it. Resign. Okay. And then her idea Look, like some chess players are so tricky. They're like, they will do everything to it until the end. Right. And I find it like so. What happened? Funny. So what and happened with your sister? No, of course she won the game, but oh, she the, did. the 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 she didn't fall for yeah, the trap that yeah. the opponent and was then, laying. It, but this um, gives a lot of like insights of how chess players do and treat others like depending on the, their opponent. For example, maybe he's just making this move like, H4, okay, just, I don't have anything, yeah. I'm just playing it out and everything. Right. Maybe he has something in mind. Exactly. He's it, trying. I always lo love it. They have these 
interviews of the Grand Chess Tour. So it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. Magnus comes out, you know, and he, you know, what happened today? And he said, well, my position was ter terrible, and here it comes. They always say, and at this moment, I wanted to resign. They never resign, right? <laughs> then they save exactly. the game. Here, I wanted to resign. So here, with the move H5, H4, I wanted to resign, and then he never resigns, he and he somehow playing. magically And it's saves funny that almost all like top chess players always say, yeah, I wanted to resign. I'm like, dude, then why aren't well, you? you? Do right, <laughs> yes. exactly. Get out of here resign. with that. I wanted to resign. I think it's resign. just very irritating uh, for their opponent who sees the interim as probably. Right. You'll catch it somewhere. And then hearing that, it just hurts even more. It's psychological. I know, just like, a yeah. last, last <laughs> twist. Uh, just a, a couple of things, uh, two very quick stories, one from my own experience, and I can share another one. Uh, so I was a young boy, I was 70, so I'm 13 years old, I'm playing in I my first U.S. Open, my first U.S. Just imagine dark hair, that's all, no, 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 the real differences. Uh, I'm, I, I'm playing in my first U.S. Open, I'm in the B group, so it means I have some really fantastic 1690 rating or something like that, right? And I playing board 270, nice elderly gentleman there, big smile on his face, very happy, beautiful teeth by the way, really, really, really nice smile. And the game goes on and it, the smile turns into a grimace. And, like, ah. and then we get into time trouble, the guy has a glass of water, he takes his teeth out and he puts them Ooh. in the water right next to him. <laughs> With his teeth. No. They've been just smiling at me for four hours and now suddenly they're in this glass of water. Boy, I, I mean, I literally played the, the, the time travel with my hand, hands, hands like that. Then there was a famous, uh, it was called the pipe game, the pipe game. Um, Bird, the, um, I think it's Amos Bird. So, He's got a situation. We just got, to, I'm sorry, yes, sir, yeah, to interrupt you. We just got results. H4, E8, he did play indeed, E8. he resigned. And look how uh, nice Least. he is to his opponent. Arman lost the game, but he still smiled and then congratulated. His opponent, as we have a champion. Champion in the house. Yeah. Our congratulations to Semyon. Semyon Lomasov is the winner of the B Group of Summer Chess Classic. Congratulations. Fantastic. And he's grabbing $4,000 as, as well. well. So just to, I'll finish this quick story. Hopefully Semyon uh, ahead, will, yes, will enjoy uh, 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 his victory and come and share it with us. So uh, Bird has a situation that he wants to sacrifice a knight. He wants, the knight is attacked. The knight is attacked and he wants to play this move king h1. Mm -hmm. If you take the knight, then tuck, 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 and you're gone. So if I play the move king h1, if I play the move king h1, you'll go, wait a minute, the knight's under attack. You're an idiot, I'm gonna take the knight. Why would you do that? Oh, I see the combination. I see the combination, got it. So what does bird do? This is fantastic. So in those days, you were allowed to smoke on the board. And the people who use the pipes, they have all of these tools uh, for the bowl that burns the tobacco. They have this uh, tool to pack the tobacco and they have this mm -hmm. other tool to clean out the ash and they have mm -hmm. this other tool to clean the pipe. He's got all of these tools. So he's preparing his pipe bowl and he goes and he knocks over his king as he's doing his thing, he just knocks over his king. Opponent says, touch, move. You've touched your king. No, Amos, look, I'm, I'm just making my, 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 no, 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 look, you touched your king. So he moves his king and then the opponent triumphantly takes the knight and tuck, 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 he wins. So he set, his, he, he set his opponent up for the trap. He purposefully knocked over his king so the opponent would say, touch, move. Eh? 
That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone like that. I grew up with someone like that. Uh, My tricky, brother, trickies. he was so tricky. He taught me how to play chess. And okay. then we had like small tournaments at home because my all of my siblings actually play chess. So he would do everything to trap me. Like there were moments he cried. Like literally, uh, he's like, oh my God, I forgot my queen. Please, please don't. And then we, I would just grab it like eagerly. I'm like, yes, finally, I am winning him for the first and time. Then, and then bang. he would just uh, like take, away, take the away the tears from like <laughs> wipe it away. And he's like making a move. And then I can see that next move is a checkmate. Right. Chess players are tricky. And cruel, and cruel. And cruel. Uh, the final position, by the way, uh, there is that problem that you you don't want to trade because yeah. I, and if you do take there is that mate right there on the board you don't have time uh, to do anything and that was why with this move rook on mm -hmm. e7 to e8 uh, black gave it up you take the take the bishop i'll take the rook thank you and that will be the game so our congratulations, and I think we've got the final standings now. Maybe I'm, uh, oh, we, we do, do have, have one game, one game left, left but which is in one group, we can, Darius. Yeah, we can actually uh, tell the people what they won because of Ooh. all of those standings. Now, actually, it's not as easy. This position? Yeah. Oh, it must be. I mean, my uh, king is, oh, knight d3 is coming, though. Exactly. Knight d3 check. Is but it's going to be a long game for sure because probably a4, I will exchange the pawn somehow. a4 here. But the, it's all about this guy, right? This guy just wins the game. I get to go king f3, I get to go king e4, and I get mm -hmm. to go g, g, g3 to g6. Actually, knight d3, <laughs> f4, king comes to e4, g4, g5. It must be winning. Right. There's really not too much in it. And yeah. uh, this is one of those... Uh, That's a pity for Darius. Darius. This is one of those terrible, terrible endings in the sense that the defender has nothing. Yeah. They're, they're, and, they just and, need to play that out. It's like suffering for nothing. Right. But you, usually what I want to say is that when you're defending a bad position, you've got some counter chances. There's something. There's no counter chances here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I'm going to set up a fortress. Yeah. There's no fortress to set up. There's nothing to do. As the knight will come to d3, dominate. The king mm -hmm. will come to e4. That will entomb the king to make sure that it has no moves. And then the pawn will just go to the g uh, mm -hmm. up the board. So, yeah, it may take you 20 moves, but... You're winning. Victory is inevitable here for... Uh, Mishra, and like you were saying, he started badly, but uh, he's catching up. <laughs> yeah, this uh, second half, uh, I he think got a good win. Abimanyu, like he was overwhelmed and a lot of emotions, joy, and then before, like during the juniors, especially, I mean, yeah. And then a lot of energy was spent on that. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, starting the tournament was kind of hard, even though he had a week. But sometimes it's not enough. This feeling, exactly. And now it feels like. He he is recovered totally, and he's playing his best. Yeah, I know, I, and I know exactly that feeling. Played in U.S. championships where at the end of the tournament, you just felt like drained, oh, yeah. and all you wanted to do was crawl back to your hotel room and just go to sleep <laughs> for the next three days. I mean, it was a, you're exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally. We played 13 rounds last year, and then I had a horrible like tournament, plus I was doing school work and everything. Because it, the, the, yeah. the U.S. championships last year was a pandemic yeah. catch-up exactly. where you had people who had qualified and then the tournaments hadn't taken place, and so... Mm -hmm. And we had another qualifiers. 14, yeah, yeah, so it became a 14 field. But With sorry. the rest days and then coming earlier, going late, it just takes a, almost took a month, right, mm -hmm. of like, you prepare for it. It's so draining, and plus you play a horrible tournament. Mm. I was exhausted. I didn't want to do anything after. For a month, I just wanted to stay some like somewhere in a... Hotel room, <laughs> my room, just don't, don't bother, bother me. me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but it, it's funny to hear you complain, and I think to yourself, myself, oh, you guys have it so easy. You know, when I was your age, no. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my tournaments uh, were 16 players 
and even sometimes 18 player fields yeah. around yeah. robins. But we also had what we called adjournments. Mm -hmm. So the games weren't finished in a single day. Sometimes they took two and sometimes even as many as three mm -hmm. days. And the tournament seemed to last forever. Like, and it was like, and then oh, candidates really, really hard. before it was the like tremendously here. strong and yes. so long, fifty-three candidates. It's yeah. remarkable. And also, we have the winner of the B group, which is Samuel. Yes, and he's going to be and with us. And he's gonna be with us in a second. Exactly, and we all will uh, pick things right up as Samuel is in the house. I'm gonna lose Bacon, you know, but. It's not the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's kind of bad. It's kind of bad, but not the worst thing. And uh, well, we we will get ourselves started here. As uh, well, we have a we have a a dragon on the board. Not the uh, not, not not the most common uh, guest in tournaments these days, but. First of all, hearty congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nicely <laughs> done. How does it feel? It's incredible. Really? Incredible. Such a relief. Yeah, it was such a tense tournament. Yeah. I think all of, of my games were incredibly tense, double-aged, and it's such a relief to finally you know, get it over with and win. Right. So it's very, very nice. <laughs> Take us through the game and tell us your yeah. mindset. I mean, because it, sure. it, it's a, at the top there, it was very, very tough round. You knew coming in. Um, the tournament, you you can control your own destiny to a degree, but then you don't want to you don't want to spoil your event by going crazy for That's a true. victory, right? Yeah, no, I was going into this round. I was okay with the draw. Okay. Um, he was trailing half a point behind, so right. I understood that he would play for a win. Of course. So I tried to play solid, and just generally, I had the you know experience playing around Robin, and in the last round. I was uh, within the tournament by half a point, right. and uh, I started playing for, for a win, almost lost, and all of my competitors lost as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the lesson that I learned is that you know you should always be happy with the draw if you lead in the tournament. Exactly. So, bishop c4. Bishop c4, yeah. Queen a5. I mean, he doesn't go into mainline dragon, but right. it's kind of a nice opening to play if you need a draw. I think because right. it's so forced. Okay. Um, castle. Castle is three. Bishop d7, knight d3. Did you d3. correctly guess that your opponent might play the yeah. dragon? Yeah. yeah. So his main opening is actually first e5. Okay. But I didn't even prepare it. <laughs> <laughs> because again, the tournament situation required that he also play really hard to win. Exactly. And I mean, right. some people don't really do that. Some people are okay with the draw in such case. Mm -hmm. But I saw that last round in round nine in this tournament, he played, so last year in round right. nine of this tournament, he played the purse. Which, so, yeah. Yeah, so I understood that he won't be playing e5. You know, I, I played the perk. It was my main defensive weapon. But then there was a chess book which said the perk was bad. And you know what I did? Stop reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I like the perk. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> I was like, no, it was my only defense. Yeah. Knight B3, tell us about that move. Um, it's just the first line of the engine. Okay. Nothing too complex going there. Oh, I right. mean, the idea is kind of to put the pawn on A5. Um, pretty straightforward, nothing, not much just going on. grab a little uh, space on that side. Yeah. Knight B3. Queen, Queen D8, A4. Okay. I mean, I think the, main I guess move. the, well, it's not such a common line, so I wouldn't call it the main move, but mm -hmm. the move that I guess comes to mind is knight a5. It looks logical, right. free moving this knight, but maybe he didn't want to trade, he wanted to keep the tension to play for a win. So b6, putting in this a5, bishop f1. Okay. There was not deep logic behind my moves. I was just <laughs> trying to play quick to, to keep the time. because right. uh, Yeah, it's, that was my plan pretty much, and, and play solid. Rook c8, bishop a6, queen d2. Okay. Um, Feels like you have a little bit something there. It's a little annoying. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I feel uncomfortable as black. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing is I don't have a clear plan as well. I mean, I was looking at something like h5, and I was thinking, oh, you know, I don't have the next move either. 
Okay. But I, I was fine with it. I just tried to play fast and let him think. Okay. Knight b4, bishop f1, rook c8, right. and a5. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, trying to create a weakness over there. Exactly, and then open my rook. Not nothing, not much going on. Very mm -hmm. intuitive move. Um, everything looks very solid. I was looking at something like knight takes e4. Wow. Okay. And uh, I think throughout the game, these ideas were quite common. Right. Knight takes but I don't c2. think there is anything I can do. Well, anything. Just rook c1. Or maybe keep the other rook. Not sure, but mm -hmm. I don't think he has enough compensation. Right. Um, so queen c7, again, very logical. a takes b6, a takes b6, and here I was faced with a big choice. Um, I think his main weakness, as ironically, is the knight on b4. It's hanging in midair and it doesn't have, it's not protected. Exactly. And I have multiple ways of attacking it. I can go, for example, can move this knight away, so I need to protect Any this. Any discovery before. like knight b5. Yeah. yeah. can also go queen d4. Okay. The problem with queen d4 is there is this knight d5. Right. Actually, this Never mind about c2, but yeah, the yeah, problem with yeah. in principle with queen d4 is he can... Um, I actually blundered that. So <laughs> I was looking at rook c1 for 20 minutes. I was looking right. at rook c1, thinking in I order, to d4. Yes. Yeah, but the knight d5, I think, just completely kills it. Yeah. So I played knight d4, the idea being to move this knight away. Yeah. Protect the c2, queen b7. And uh, I think I could also, I could play rook a3, just keep the pressure the position very complex. Also, also it just feels, uh, Semyon, that uh, I like this move rook a3 because rook b3 could also be really annoying. Exactly, like, yeah. oh my gosh. I mean, at some moment, you know, you can imagine black desperately playing e5 and d5 and, you know, rook c3, I don't know, rook c3, knight e4, because you start to get this feeling like uh, I'm, uh, I'm on the back foot. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think he has to go, has, has to do something drastic, like e5. Yeah, drastic, I think. Otherwise, a, yeah. rook b3, rook b6 is very dangerous. Exactly. The problem is, uh, the problem is I just calculated this line, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to go for rook a3, didn't want to spend more time. Okay. Knight d1 is a funny move, because, uh, I mean, it's kind of a move back, but the knight has to retreat, knight okay. c6, and then bishop a6. Right. Uh, by the way, just a quick question for you. In this position, you, you, you mentioned before uh, these ideas of knight takes c2, knight takes e4, you considered them, but you found, uh, go ahead, if you would play yeah. knight c2, knight c2, knight e4. Again, I'm thinking drastic and desperate, right? But it's not enough compensation. I don't think so. No. Again, I was going into this game thinking, if I get a solid position, even if it's not better, I'm fine. So right. looking at that, I thought everything's protected, I'm a piece up. Even if there is enough compensation, okay, I, I will never lose this. So I, will, gotcha. I was fine. I wasn't All right. Yeah. Fair, fair. Um, so knight c6. Knight c6, bishop a6. Queen e8. It's a funny line. Um, yeah. I underestimated that. I thought there was no way he could be fine. Right. But I think it turned out he was, I mean. Remarkable. Yeah. The game was very, very complex after that. I was very happy with that, not so happy, you know, an hour later. <laughs> um, so bishop c8 I don't think works. But I guess for the sake of time, we can no, skip that. Knight okay. c3, just protecting the e4. Rook as d8. As well as protecting the rook, and now you want to munch the exchange. Yeah. Yeah. And um, f3. I just wanted to grab this b6 pawn. Good thinking. Yeah. <laughs> the training's working. But uh, yeah. I underestimated this, this weakness, because it's really... You do have a g3 square issue. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what happened in the game later on, actually. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about these games in the like Hedgehog, where yes. you know, white has the pawn on f3, and black just blasts right. the center open. And, With d5, yeah, and, and away you go. What can take five pawns on the queen side, <laughs> doesn't matter. King gets sacked. Yeah. So queen b8, queen f2, knight b4, bishop b5. And e5 and d5 is coming. So e5, Good. knight b3, bishop Ooh. takes, knight takes, and um, he played rook c8. Maybe he could play d5 straight away. Very, very complex. I, I, I actually don't know if that was good for me or not. Right. Um, Here, th this was our main line because we anticipated him playing e5 and d5. And we thought d5, queen d2 was your intention. We weren't sure. Um, here, you mean with rook on c8 or on d8? I think with the rook. Gee, I'm, now I'm not 100% yeah, sure I, either. Here I was going to play rook a4. Queen oh, two. sorry. No, yeah. you're right. Rook a4 was our intention. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think I'm, I'm fine. 
I'm just not sure how much I, Black cares about this pawn. Like I can right. grab it, but again, I was thinking about the, all of these games where Black just sacks the queen side, yeah, yeah, plays yeah. the rook c8, and it's really... Says, okay, I'm a pawn down, but you've got some weaknesses. Yeah. yeah. Now looking at that, I actually don't know what, what move to make, so... <laughs> Uh, you were you're going to cross that bridge if your opponent uh, forced you. Yeah. He didn't play that. He played rook c8. I think that also makes a lot of sense. He actually told me after the game that he blundered something, which we will uh, in get to in a moment. Okay. So the idea is to attack the c2 pawn and wait for one move and then play d5. Okay. Rook c1, d5. Right. And now queen d2, as right. you suggested. Mm -hmm. But the rook is not on, c on d8 anymore. Right. So. Exactly. Um, you protect d3 simultaneously as well. Yeah. Yeah, so the knights, rook c4, I think very importantly, I have this knight a3 that I actually didn't see initially. Mm -hmm. th th speaking of that, I think something like b5 could also be interesting. I'm not uh -huh. sure if black has enough. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if it works out tactically. Mm -hmm. I think it shouldn't. I have c3 and everything. Right. But just kind of like a model line of something like takes, takes. I think this could be quite. quite Interesting. Yeah, you, maybe you don't want to get involved uh, in these lines. Uh, right. There's some bishop c5 uh, thing that you might want to prefer. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's oh, well, knight takes uh, c4 and bishop c5. Okay. Yeah, something of this nature oh, might yeah, be good. a little bit more than yeah, yeah get you l l letting his knight hop hippity hop. That's good. Yeah. So you, you played d4. Right. I was shocked. Just took on d4. Because uh, I thought it was just a pawn blunder. Right. It turned out to be a very interesting position. I think he had Result. lots of compensation. Okay, cool. That I underestimated. So takes, bishop, bishop f4, four. takes. And knight h5. Right. And suddenly I, I realized that I didn't know what, is it, what to do. And even though he said that he did blunder, I think it was kind of a lucky blunder. Yeah, he, sometimes you have those, right? Yeah. Here, the move bishop d2 was a, a kind of a stunner because I think our focus had been on bishop d6 and e5. We had right. anticipated you, if he moves as a rook, it doesn't really, yeah. we weren't really sure. The oh. problem was bishop h6 that I didn't like. You didn't like bishop a6? Yeah. Oh, oh. So I have, you have to ex sacrifice an exchange now. Queen takes d4. Queen takes d4. Something like that, right? Probably. I was actually looking at rook a7. Ooh, okay. Queen c6, knight takes. This is the riding the tiger. Oh, okay. Actually, I was thinking of, of checking first. Right. Say king. I don't know what, what which score is the best, but say h2. Okay. And queen okay. c4. And um, oh no, sorry, not queen c4. Oh yeah, queen c4. Sorry. I was about to say this is commentator's prerogative. Our prerogative is we get to put all the pieces on pre, <laughs> <laughs> and more or less the players have succeeded in taking over the commentator's chaos. Uh, this is a mess. Rook to chaotic, yeah. rook to d1. Rook d1, I and I was looking at rook d8. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if yeah. I want this. So I mean, my first thought was, okay, I'm trading the queens. I should be fine. Mm -hmm. But the more I looked at this, the less I liked it. Okay. Because there are always these bishop f4 ideas. Rook takes d6. Right. So I decided to okay. um, play bishop d2. Okay. Rook d8. Again, I think a very strong move. I underestimated that. I just didn't think he could play so slowly, move his rook away from the open file. Right. But I think once he does that, it becomes very double-edged. And the game went rook a7, queen b8, queen e7. And now, yeah, that was the whole idea. You wanted to trade yeah. queens. Not f4, very strong again, I think. Very, very strong. I didn't see this. Okay. Rook f1. I think our focus, for what it's worth, uh, was king f1, strangely enough. King f1. Uh, side, uh, sidestepping both knight h3 which we thought was a very serious threat, yeah. <laughs> as well as knight e2. Something like knight h3, queen c7. Yeah, and uh, this is, yeah, okay, now it starts to get messy. And again. the queen goes to h2, yeah, 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 I'm not sure if it's good. So you went rook f1. Went rook f1, knight h2 was definitely possible. I thought we, we thought you would play king h1. Exactly, yeah. I think yeah. g takes h3 loses, I think. Yeah. So king h1, I don't think he has anything better than retreat. Okay. And. Uh, like you were at just going to trade queens, queens. yeah. Yeah, maybe there was something better, but I was fine with that. Exactly. He played knight e6, I think also a very interesting move, potentially. f4, I think d3 was very interesting. Mm. He didn't do that. Um, I think if I don't take, this pawn becomes very dangerous. 
like something like C3, it just lives, yeah? Yeah. This pawn is a, like you say, dangerous pawn, yeah. So takes and rook D3, mm -hmm. just so double-edged, so sharp. Um, I have, I don't know where I, where I should put my bishop. Um, right. Um, mm. Let's just see, because uh, uh, we, we've got our uh, dinner, mm -hmm. our uh, closing ceremony coming up. At this moment, we thought that you were dominating. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, At I think this point, it's, it, it, it's pretty much uh, over. And uh, his last chance, so you think his last chance was here, that he had to play d3 after f4. That I think so, it. yeah. I think yeah. so. I think after I play e5, I'm a healthy pawn up. My pieces are better. His bishop is bad. So I think that was the last mistake. After that, I think it's, it's pretty much over. It's, and yeah. once again, your judgment after d3 was? Um, I thought it should equalize, but I didn't think I, I should have more. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not sure because I had we, b we were both in time trouble. Right. Um, but yeah, I didn't think I. Let's put it this way: I thought his compensation was very strong. Right. Whether or not it works out tactically, I don't know. Maybe right. there is a world in which I just win. Right. But I thought that was dangerous, especially in time trouble. Right. Champion. Yes. Very nice. Congratulations once more. Go and celebrate, and we will celebrate with you as. Uh, the closing ceremony is coming up. Thank you so much for Gladly. joining us. I will. Thank you. Okay. And there we have it, everyone. Uh, the uh, Summer Chess Classics coming to, go, coming to a close with just one game remaining. And that is uh, the Mishra versus Darush game. And when we left it, it looked to us like it was completely winning for Mishra. And our judgment remains the same. This is completely yeah, winning. It, it was Completely winning, and Mishra did bring. Uh, it's completely yeah. winning, uh, Begum. Yeah, uh, Mishra because did. Mishra did what you suggested. Just bring, bring the, the king. king to e4. Yeah. And then it feels like we are gonna push the palm. <laughs> push the baby. <laughs> push uh, the baby. One of the things that uh, you should always be, I want to say, mindful about when you are pushing the pawn up the board, lead the pawn with your king. In other words, play the move king g6. Mm -hmm. And g4, yeah. And then g4. Let Get your king uh, on the promotion, that. on he the promotion square. He did play square. king g6. Exactly. It feels like he can literally read your mind. Yeah, well one of the, you know I had this taser moment. It was 2016, I was in Baku, and mm -hmm. it was the um, captain for the US women's team. And it was the last round. The women had played fantastic. We had played everybody, India, China, Russia. I mean, we just played all the top teams. And um, uh, Anna Zatansky, she has a completely drawn ending with Tanya. Uh, all she has to do, it's a rook and pawn end game. All she has to do is bring her king up the board and escort her pawn. Instead, she put her pawn in front of the oh, king no. too far. Her king got cut, and we lost the game, and the That's match was brutal. tied 2 to 2. And it was like the last game to finish. <laughs> nearly fell off the stage. Probably it was terrible. You, you lost your mind. I oh, feel sorry for I know, team captains I know. or Oof. coaches. It must be. We suffer. It must be. We suffer. Oh, well, the, the, yeah. uh, the and also, by the way, Misha did even better. King G6, Bishop F8, King F6, and there is no way to protect E5 pawn. True. I yeah. think Misha is just uh, getting the game and mm -hmm. uh, Darish is about to resign from the body language. You can see that. Exactly. He is just making the last move, it feels like, Bishop E7. Check. He did check King F5 and yeah. there's no move. No, no move. He, he well, does he play Bishop D8, but... Okay, I think we play G4. Here, I right? think you can even take on e5 and play I g4. I know, but yeah. He did take it. He's a pawn grabber, good man. Knight takes e5. King c5, g4, the problem is that you cannot attack the knight, chase g4. it, which is just yeah. so winning. Goes. g4, bishop c7, g5, if you take on e5, king takes king c4, g6. Sorry, I'm you went to way <laughs> too fast. You t go ahead. Uh, okay. play, play, we play we do moves. not have the moves, so. King, yes. King of six, and right. then 
Knight takes e5. It did go king g4. Right. And then he did play bishop, bishop c5. Seven. Yeah, to bishop c7. Yeah. Uh, Abimani is about to play g5, I believe. The problem is that this doesn't work because I am way ahead. There's yeah, he played. It's not even a race. This it's is not even a race. I mean, you I have can't hardly. I can even take it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> exactly. Just sack the queen. queen and then just yeah. go with it. Exactly. For now, we have this position on the board. And Reaching for a new score sheet is... You know, sometimes some sure. players play until the score sheet ends and then just resign. On the 60th move yeah. or at the end of the score sheet. Because it's they're lazy. They know, oh, the position is completely lost. Why I would waste another <laughs> score sheet? And there is, there is a weird thing when you're What's close uh, to end the score sheet, but you're losing, you play that out. Why? Until the score sheet ends. Until the score sheet is <laughs> over, right. And, I uh, have a feeling Darius is ready to re resign. Sure. I think in, in moments like these, uh, I think a lot of grandmasters get lost in what happened mm -hmm. earlier in the game. And they're just thinking about uh, troubles past. It's just hard to see pe players upset. I wish yeah. everyone could win the last round. Exactly. exactly. Because it's just a great feeling to end the tournament with a victory. And there there we go. It. He did resign. And then we don't have any other games, games for mine. Yeah, but at, at, at such moments, we also like to kind of do a uh, badge of honor. We go down uh, the list of the participants. Absolutely. How they did, because you explained to us so very, very nicely, uh, you know, that everybody's going to get a prize, you would say. Absolutely. Everybody's going to get a prize. So what and we're going to do is we're going to go down the list of players. but. In reverse, we're going <laughs> to go uh, from 10th to 1st. Okay. Let's start with Group A. Perfect. So, unfortunately, Darius lost his game and finishes and finished, the, uh, unfortunately, the tournament with three points right. and last place. And we have tie for 8th, uh, eight, which is Abhimanyu Mishra in Krishna and Sasi Kiran with three and a half points. And we have tie for 6th, Pranav Vin Vinkatesh. Yes. Ilya Nizhnik, and we have tie for uh, fourth, which is Aram Hakopian and Benjamin Volk with five points, and we have tie for second, Ramak Satwani and John Burke with five and a half points, and we have a clear winner of the tournament, solo first, first, <laughs> Nicholas Grandmaster Nicholas Theodore, six thousand dollars uh, with six and a half points. And six thousand dollars. Our congratulations to Nicholas. Now do the same thing, but tell us about the B group. <laughs> <laughs> B group. Justin Wang got the last place with two points, and Alshan Moradabadi with uh, nine with two and a half points, and eighth place is Alexander Landerman with three points, and seventh is Luka Budisavlovich with four and a half points. He gets to 50% thanks to his last round game. Good win. win. Yep. And we have three-way tie for fourth with uh, Arman Mikalyan, Damburasin Batsuren, Brandon Jacobson with five points. And we have clear third Aksha Chandra with five and a half points. And second, Andrew Hong with six points. And we have the winner of the tournament, Semyon Lamasov with six and a half points who is grabbing $4,000 as well. Our congratulations to Sandy. Congratulations and to the winners. To both winners. It was wonderful. And uh, we have a photo of all the people that made our broadcast possible. I'm not talking about us. Us, absolutely. But look at our crew. Lovely people, thank you so much. <laughs> Because of them, we are here, yeah, so right. we're talking. Right, we yeah. wouldn't be here except Absolutely. for those uh, in the back. We're not going to call them the men uh, uh, from Orange. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to call them. But we do have more chess coming up. Let's just give a shout out to Chess 9LX. Yeah, we're going to have it from September 7th to 10th. And right. We are going to have Fisher Random Chess. Right. First, we are starting from the ultimate moves and then we are switching to Rapid, which is 220 plus 5 seconds. Right. It's going to be an exciting tournament with great, one of the best chess okay. players in the world. Absolutely. I have actually gotten a sneak preview of that roster of players and it hasn't been disseminated yet, but I've got to tell you, 
do mark your calendars, everybody, because that is going to be really, really fun and feature it's as you said. It's going to be a fascinating event. <laughs> I'm excited to watch Otiasa. Absolutely. I like Fisher Random. And as we close the show, Begum, I really want to say, this is the first time, yeah. and uh, I really enjoyed working Thank with you, you yes, and the sir. whole team. It was really, really nice. I appreciate I it. Mean, I mean, that just one moment when you missed the mate and wand, that was oh, the, the, the Other than yeah. that, you were terrific. You also disappointed <laughs> me there, but other than that, the shame you were I incredible. Felt it was terrible. I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, Thank you for Thank you so enjoying. much, everyone, for watching, and follow us on our social media and follow the tournaments. Absolutely. In the meanwhile, goodbye, and thank you again. Bye. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.